मिनट गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग कैसे सर बस ठीक है थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम आ गई थी ओके ओके स्टार्ट होने में लेट हो गया नहीं नहीं नो प्रॉब्लम थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड वेलकम और गुड मॉर्निंग सर जी मैं आप मॉर्निंग राजेश मैं आपको होश बना देता हूं सर नहीं 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 अभी अभी, अभी अभी एक काम कर दीजिए आप आ, नहीं आप यहाँ पे विनय ऋषिवाल सर हैं उनको विनय जी को होश बना दीजिए विनय ऋषिवाल जी विनय ऋषिवाल सर बना दिया मैंने ठीक है और, तो और होश रहो मुझे भी को होश बना दो मेरे मैं आपको सर एक्चुअली मैं मोबाइल से कनेक्टेड हूँ ना अभी हाँ नहीं मैं भी मोबाइल से कनेक्ट हूँ इसमें सिस्टम में कुछ प्रॉब्लम आ गई तो इस वजह से मुझे मोबाइल से कनेक्ट होने में थोड़ा इसलिए डिले हो गया है ना तो ठीक है मैं भी बस दस मिनट में कंप्यूटर पे करता हूँ तो तब तक तब तक आप ऐसे ही रखिए सर को कोर्स बना दीजिए मुझे ही बना दीजिए कोर्स आपको ही बना देता हूँ आप सर अपने आप को वो कर लीजिए मैं कर दे रहा हूँ म्यूट ऑल मैंने कर दिया है आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर लीजिए आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर लीजिए सर ठीक है ठीक है हम दोनों को कोहस बना दीजिए गोपाल जी को भी कोहस बना दीजिए मैं बना देता हूँ ठीक है नाउ यू कैन स्टार्ट सर यस सर थैंक यू Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Doctor Sir, shall we start? Binay Sir. Ah, uh, if you are not waiting for other participants, then we shall. No problem. Ah, uh, Sir, participant. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ye connect hote jayenge, kyunki ah, uh, uh, nahi up log hamara starting time hai, to uh, within ten minute connect hoi jate hain, lagbhag sare participants. So, okay. dhere dhere ho jayenge. So, we should start, Sir. Okay, Sir. Thank you. so uh, welcome all the participants and uh, good morning to all so uh, this is third day of this uh, fdp and day one technical session आशुतोष सर आप थोड़ा सा ना बाहर वाले रूम में बैठ जाइए अच्छा इधर ना थोड़ा नेटवर्क थोड़ा सिग्नल में दिक्कत है वाईफाई थोड़ा स्लो है ना यहाँ पे मीटिंग के हिसाब से थोड़ा सा बाहर है ना अच्छा 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 नहीं वैसे मुझे तो आवाज साफ आ रही बाहर साफ कैसे आ रही है बिल्कुल क्लियर है कोई दिक्कत नहीं क्लियर है ना तो तब तो ठीक है मैं स्टार्ट कर दे रहा हूँ फिर विनय सर को ही स्टार्ट करना है उसके बाद ओके 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 ठीक है अभी मैं स्टार्ट कर दे रहा हूँ अभी मैं पहले पर्सनल उससे चल रहा है वाईफाई से नहीं चल रहा है दोनों ही ऑन कर ले रहा हूँ ओके सो विद इन वन मिनट वी विल स्टार्ट टिल द टाइम पार्टिसिपेंट विल कनेक्ट
So good morning to all. So this is third day of this five day long FDP on advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning and societal development. And this is the seventh technical session. So first of all, I welcome Professor Binay Rishiwal, uh, MJP Ruhir Khan University, Bareilly. Professor Binay Rishiwal is PhD in computer science. He has 21 years of experience. He has more than 103 publication and more than 15 patent out of which 11 national and four international patent. He has delivered more than 100 talks. He has written three books. He has completed more than five projects. He is general chair of four international conference and Professor Binay Rishiwal is a senior member of IEEE and ACM. So uh, we welcome Professor Binay Rishiwal, sir. So thank you, sir, and uh, thank you for being the part of this uh, FDP. And over to Professor Binay Rishiwal, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So I'm sharing my PPTs here. I hope yes, everyone sir. can see to it. This PPT is yes, sir. visible. Right. Sir, very clear. Okay. okay. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity for being the part of this very FDP. As I have seen the title of the FDP, it is really uh, very appealing and influential because in today's scenario, a lot of work is going on for the societal development making some aids of the you know, computer science oriented algorithms. And those algorithms have been evaluated from the origin of artificial intelligence only. Uh, that too, when I looked into the schedule, I find that next lecture from the next speaker is also uh, scheduled on machine learning. So I just curtailed some of the detailed portion, rather I kept my talk and I would be rendering the contents only abstractly about the machine learning and then certain application to the society development. So that the overall summary of the theme can be made clear to all the participants. As we know that the term learning, or I must say intelligence or computing has been introduced somewhere in 1956 into a conference by John McCarthy. So the, co the coin for AI was first tossed in 1956. Though a patent was already made somewhere in 1876, but that was about doing the computing automatically, how that can be done. And thereafter, the Turing test came into picture. And then finally, in a conference in 1956, this, is, this was John McCarthy, who introduced the term officially as artificial intelligence. So we know what is an artificial intelligence. In this, we just uh, try to get machine to work and behave like humans. So it seems very difficult emulating the behavior of a human through a machine. I still don't believe that it is going to work out completely. Though the man, those who are the legion in the industry, they used to say or comprehend that yes, uh, there will be a time when machines are going to supersede the humans. So let's see uh, what may happen in the field. Uh, so artificial intelligence is actually a learning from the examples or the experiences or recognizing objects, understanding and responding to languages, making decisions and solving problems. So there are plenty of applications which are existing in the real world where such kind of intelligence can be applied. Artificial intelligence or machine learning or deep learning or whatever set we drive or evolve from the core branch AI, they usually work into three major steps. The first one is AI is there to sense the data, right? Whatever application is there, there may be some computer vision, there may be some audio processing, there may be a navigation application. So initially it just sends about the data. And once the data has been sensed, collected, extracted uh, as per your choice, thereafter in the second phase, the artificial intelligence simply comprehend it completely. And once the data is understood completely, then in the third step, it act accordingly. Because there is always a rule chain given to the machine as per the data collected, that rule chain is being applied to the understood data. 
and finally some act is performed right uh, there are different types of artificial intelligence available uh, the first one is artificial neuro intelligence sometimes we also refer or call it the weak ai it is called weak ai because it applies on the restricted you know set of data or the set of instruction the machine can behave only over a confined database it cannot take the generalized decisions for example uh, you have alexa at your home uh, if those who have worked with the alexa alexa is a pre you know instruction machine which can give a kind of intelligence for a few questions it can make certain permutation combinations but yes it is very restricted machine uh, if you ask the alexa to uh, you know play a song for you it can do it for you if it, it don't find the song it just refuses it and say that it is not available in the directory sometimes you you know can fire some vague questions to alexa it try at its level best to answer you uh, as politely as it can but ultimately when it reaches out of questions into its database it is not able to you know cope up with the human questions and that is why we say that it is based on the weak ai similarly the face verification in iphone or some other phones where the softwares for verifying the faces are available so any biometric application you apply there are certain cases which are given to the phones suppose uh, an iphone is given 15 facial expressions 20 facial expressions or Uh, for example 50 facial expressions so if there is a change in the expression beyond that 50 then your phone won't be able to recognize you so there is always a limitation a robot which was called sofia was developed earlier if you remember that it was a very uh, famous human robot uh, the sofia was trained to take so many actions it was trained for 60 facial expressions also so it can understand what you are thinking what you are you know talking Uh, it has been given the artificial legs and hands also uh, so that it can talk walk and understand it can think a bit also it can do a bit reasoning also and the sofia has a very dedicated sophisticated circuitry into its brain and accordingly it takes a lot of decisions as per the instructions given to it uh, this is the first robot uh, who has been given the citizenship of this uh, saudi arabian countries uh, one application you must uh, be using in your phone is google map google map has been trained like anything because every day the data is changing the uh, new locations are being added to it it has been you know in it has been inherently had so many of uh, optimization algorithms by which it gives you the shortest path it gives you the congestion free path it try to avoid all those congested route but still most of the time it is a failure when it shows you the wrong path it never know that path is actually open or the other side or not so so if you are traveling from a shorter path and you never get your internet open you never let the google map know that you are actually taking a shorter path then it won't ever ever be able to update itself so it is also restricted you know in terms of information so when we actually uh, look into to evaluate the behavior of uh, a human being completely out of ai then that kind of ai is called artificial general intelligence or in other terms we can say it is a strong ai so in a strong ai what is the expectation the expectation is we have to perform some intellectual task right we have to think we have to reason and then we have to take an action at our own like like humans usually do uh, one one important thing about strong ai is is it actually desirable it, it, this question is always there in the air but it is always debatable because why do we actually need to emulate the human completely because that may be you know very uh, threatening for the society in the later stage i'll give you certain examples though it may be very helpful also but still we have to look into the details is it actually desirable so so there may be you know certain things uh, which uh, let us know that it is a failure at times uh, for example if i uh, train a robot into a birthday party i just install a webcam or some audio visual system to the robot and i say you do the learning in the birthday party for all men those who are enjoying it so that robot try to observe a lot of thing out there he just look into that those you know who are drinking the cold drink having the pastries or uh, a song is played by the party owner so everybody is dancing and enjoying the birthday ambience so a lot of things have been observed that somebody is dancing while dancing somebody is enjoying is very you know casual way someone is very decent even in a party and there may be few guys those who have no expression on their faces there may be few guys though who may be looking very sudden even in such good ambience 
So what shall be the learning of the robot? The robot will learn that Mr. X, whenever a birthday party is fired, Mr. X is always sad. It will learn that Mr. Y usually dance when a birthday party is fired. Right? It will learn that Mr. Z eat a lot more when a party is being thrown. So the learnings are different because a robot cannot understand what is going emotionally inside the human being. Because there are, you know, billion trillions of neurons running regularly and the emotions are connected to it directly. So that man may be thinking something else and he is not behaving good even in the good ambience. So it is very, very difficult for a robot or a machine to learn the actual things going inside into a human being. Fine. Similarly, if I ask a robot to learn about the potholes available on a, you know, pathway, and if it is driving a car or it is driving a motorbike, so so if you uh, let him know that after certain kilometers there shall be a pothole of this much of diameter or size, so it can avoid it, undoubtedly. Like a human being, it can avoid it. But over the night, if you make three or four potholes of different size and different, you know, architecture, it won't be able to avoid them because it don't have the capability to think of that it might have been a pothole of more danger. So it is going to put in its wheel into the pothole and he may be fallen to the road. So uh, and human being usually observe if it is a pothole, then every pothole it can recognize. You need not to train a human for each pothole after each kilometer. Right? Even if a speed breaker is there, so one speed breaker, human being will understand that it is going to hurt me. Fine, but a machine has to make a lot of training for that. And what, at what speed it should cross the speed breaker, you know, when it should take a proper break, what should be the speed to take a break as well. So, so, so giving the full capabilities of a human being is always questionable. The third type of artificial intelligence we do have is artificial super intelligence. Uh, super intelligence uh, so far do not exist into the machines. But yes, we have seen a lot of action into movies or science fiction series that right? you might have seen some. There are uh, movies like Star Wars, Star Trek, right? uh, Robocop. There are many movies, Spider-Man, Superman. So these are the heroes which have been made with the intelligence of the machines. And this fiction has been actually created. Uh, they don't exist as such. But people used to claim, people like Elon Musk, who is one of the leading investors uh, and very known for the uh, innovations into these learning schemes, or the machines, he used to quote that by 2050, the machines will completely supersede the humans. And yes, uh, there will be a possibility to have the superhumans also. Those who can think like a man and they can you know, pass on the capabilities of a normal human being. So let's see what will happen in the future. I as a technocrat do not believe it in such theory completely so far. Uh, these are certain, you know, applications we have of AI. There are different areas into which we can apply AI or you can call ML also. I'll come to the ML, right? AI and ML are, you know, can be used alternatively. It depends on the area of application. So there are applications. The first application I have shown here is automation. Uh, things are happening automatically now. So if I talk about the self-driven cars, I talk about the self-driven ships, those who can cross the sea without any assistance. Uh, we can talk about the robots, which can take a lot of action. A robot can be a waiter into a hotel. A robot can be a high-end, you know, a surgeon, surgeon who can do the uh, complex surgeries also. There may be self-flying drones for certain applications. There may be some softwares which will be doing writing and reviewing of the legal contracts. As an example, if I told you that a software has been developed by J.P. Morgan Company. J.P. Morgan Company has developed a software for reading and writing or reviewing the legal contracts where... Uh, when they went through some case study, they find that 12,000 legal contracts, which takes more than 36,000 hours to write and review, the software takes only a fraction of seconds to do the similar task. So you can understand that how well they can perform it if they have been trained well and if the accurate set of data has been given to the software or the machine. Right? Self-flying drones are almost everywhere now. I recently got a few uh, patented grant for the uh, self-flying drones. One of the patent was about the security of women, uh, where whenever a woman find herself into an unsafe zone, it can only issue a voice command, right? And rather than the policemen, we can deploy certain drones into a smart city. And that command shall be interpreted by the drone. 
the drone can take the unique id of that girl from its voice it can you know extract all the information about the girl initially it will throw the high intensity of light so that it can she can feel safe then the drone will show the pathway to her home and it will you know escort the lady so that the lady can feel safe initially it will take the lady to the uh, crowded place and thereafter the lady can take the uh, action or decision whether she wants to go alone or she still need the pathway from the drone side so that is how we can have a connected database and there may be you know dozens of drones to be deployed over a small city and they can take the position they can self fly and they can take actions for the security of so many other things also not only for women fine right? self driven cars are there as you know uh, a, a recent venture has been launched by the tesla which is called a robo taxi uh, that is in the you know final testing phase a robo taxi uh, is like ola and uber what you have to do there is no driver in the taxi you just have to book a robo taxi the robo taxi will take your latitude and longitude and after extracting your exact location the taxi will reach to your doorstep you just have to get into the taxi it will take you to the destination and there shall be a digital wallet which will be connected to your account you know and the amount shall be detected automatically so uh, so people like ola and uber owners are really in threat listening about the announcement regularly made by the companies who are uh, about to launch some self driven cars and the accuracy of the self driven car is actually very very perfect because they have given a lot of learning algorithms to it but while you are a driver if you are you know exhausted Uh, you may be a bit reluctant while you are driving so there is a possibility of getting uh, some fatal accident but while you are a machine you are only looking at your destination and you are able to observe the hindrances way before then obviously you can take certain actions which will never lead to an accident so that there are many things so let's see how successfully it can be deployed and how successfully it can be accepted by the people you know in the real life so some magical time is about to come actually the second application we have is better healthcare uh, as we know the position of the doctors or the medical practitioners especially in india is very very poor we need to have a very better access here if you look into the ratio over the population of india roughly or approximately it comes one doctor over 1 4 5 you know people of the india so so you can imagine what is the situation the accessibility is not that easy and that is why you always find a queue when you visit a doctor there is always you know 2 4 6 hour you are supposed to wait or you have to take an appointment over the call so so the uh, the solutions coming in form of online you know health assistance where you can online book you can take a slot from a medical practitioner uh, you just look into who is expertise into your own kind of disease that then you just take an appointment and you talk to him it can give you personal mentoring there is a one to one interaction there is a face to face interaction and even there are softwares which can recommend the medicines automatically if you just put in the symptoms to it right but always having a medical practitioner is better to diagnose your disease and later the prescription should be given so by which what we can do we can remove those queues on the doorstep of the doctors we can save a billion of dollars because we are not going to travel for the 40 kilometers for an expert or to another city for an expert right that that is why uh, the leading industry of the business people have been started deploying many intelligent health apps by which you can take a slot to the doctor you can go to the medicine app you can order the medicine at your doorstep right so everything on a click of the uh, system or the keyboard you can get all the applications or you can get all the access related to the healthcare at your home recently ibm ai has uh, launched a very wide you know software google ai has launched Uh, software for eye doctor for example in eye doctor what google ai do if you are a diabetic patient it just keep track all the vitals happening in your iris system and as per the iris system prediction it just let you know is there any chances that your uh, diabetes is being increased and you are running towards the blindness fine so if there is a change you know or an increase into your disease it will keep you alerting on a regular interval so you cannot avoid you know you cannot be reluctant more to it you will certainly and immediately visit to your doctor or a medical practitioner and that will certainly help you to you know uh, stop the severity in your disease similarly education is also a field which is completely out of day to day because traditional teaching 
is not completely acceptable though it is the best one but still there are many other verticals which have been launched for the teaching second uh, we have seen the very you know pandemic situation in last two years and everything has been put it upon an online platform that may be zoom that may be you know google meet or that may be teachment there are many applications assignments are to be submitted by google classroom or other platforms so a school needs to be completely reimagined especially for the kids right the the higher education people or the research people or the engineering people can understand the things well because they take less time to understand them but in case of a school you have to uh, reimagine it completely i i should take one example for it suppose there are 20 students in your class and uh, when you observe all 20 have different capabilities right and restrictions but how do you make an assignment for them how do you give an exercise to them usually what you do suppose you make 10 questions into an exercise you keep some questions which are very simple you keep some questions which are average and you keep some questions which are excellent so that a student which is very normal to the excellent can solve it right and they can at least attempt it but if every student need a different kind of exercise can a teacher can do it into the classroom traditionally or with the you know traditional practices it is almost impossible whereas a machine can understand the emotions of a student that what he is thinking into the classroom what he is trying to ask into the classroom he just look into what kind of queries have been raised regularly by the different students and accordingly an app or a machine or a expert system can prepare a different exercise for each student individually right generating 50 questions from the database available into the cloud will be very very easy it has it just has to give certain keywords and based on those keywords a different exercise of 50 questions shall be generated for each individual student and that can be thrown at each alternative weekend and those student can better understood the kind of exercises actually meant individually for them fine and that will certainly increase the reach of the student understandability of the student and it will enjoy the classroom like anything so so there, there are many verticals which are still untouched and need to be explored on a regular basis especially in the field of education similarly Uh, there is another application uh, for the better information right today everybody has a lot of data a huge data has been generated willingly or unwillingly right for example uh, if you don't do anything with your facebook uh, over the week you just surf it once or twice right what happened you generate almost 1 gb data without doing anything it remains idle and if you count only the facebook users there are billions of users or trillions of users exist for facebook right and those facebook users every day do nothing still they are generating tvs or gbs of data to the cloud so so data is not a problem today everywhere we are talking about data right even i am taking a lecture you are doing the video recording right people are looking at their whatsapp they are sending the messages they are receiving their calls just by uh, muting their system right so data data and data everywhere there is some data so once you have the data about anything obviously finding it analyzing it and taking some action upon it is very easy and that is why there are plenty of application exist you can forecast the weather if you have the data about the weather you can predict the earthquake right if you have the data about the uh, happenings inside the earth or the seismic observations you can have right in fact google has launched an exclusive app for predicting the earthquake uh, that there are different kind of vibrancies occur in your phone when an earthquake is going to happen so your phone automatically observe it and it gives you an alert that there is a chance that an earthquake can take place uh, within this much of time duration right so you can take certain precautions certain measures it can predict the stock market right it can predict some other thing you wanted to so so information is there Uh, algorithms are there uh, they can do some action upon the based information they can predict something and accordingly an application can be prepared for the real society your ai applications helps to optimize the uses of your resources right so better of use of resources is done uh, you talk about a smart home 
right? You talk about the manufacturing unit, which is completely smart. You talk about uh, the basic example of a smart meter in your home. What does a smart meter do? In a smart meter, the auto billing can be done. An auto, you know, observance of the energy consumption, consumption in each room can be done. It can intimate you in the overuse. It can let you know in the saving about the energy, right? So, so you are connected directly as a uh, human or the owner of that uh, machinery unit and your meter is very smart. It just calculate at the end of each day that how many units you have consumed today. And it can send a message to your mobile. Accordingly, you can look into if last month your bill was 9,500 some rupees, then you can calculate the next month the bill is going to be reduced because we are utilizing the energy very optimally. Right? This is just one example. Similarly, there may be any, any resource right? which you can use completely and in an optimal fashion just by applying certain machine learning algorithms or AI based applications. Right? You can also apply uh, your AI to environmental use. Uh, today you have air quality index, you have the emission of the CO2, right? You have the early warnings for the disaster, that disaster may be uh, just uh, your fire into forest, right? If you deploy a machine learning uh, system there, then you are, you are being intimated prior it happens. So you have the option to take some actions upon that situation, right? So, so environment is directly connected. And there may be some other applications also, you can divide them. But along with the applications, uh, when we apply too much of AI or ML or deep learning, uh, we find certain you know, negative impacts also uh, to the society or to the real world. So, so let me take you to a tour of those negative impacts. Uh, these are some of the negative impacts. The first question always arises whenever we talk about the automatic learning or the automation or the AI or the machine learning that people used to you know, say that it will take away the jobs from the humans. Fine. It is always debatable. People used to put in their different kind of views into it. Fine. Uh, but yes, uh, the manual job shall be uh, you know, reduced undoubtedly. But on the other hand, there may be jobs which are skill oriented, which are based on some vocational you know, training and uh, it has happened always when we make the banking sector, you know, computerized people were very afraid that uh, these computers are going to snatch the jobs of the clerks or the people, those who do the work manually into the register, but it never happened. Now everybody is trained to run the computers and jobs are still there. So similarly in the industry field, there may be less jobs for the manual working, but yes, there will be more jobs for the skill oriented people. Second, uh, in fact, we could see is missing the human touch. It is really important because if you find anyone in your home, in a party, in your office, or anywhere you go, people are more involved with the machines than the humans. They are less communicative. They are less vocal. They keep their eyes most of the time to their phones, right? Or to their machines. Fine. Even I cannot, you know, put off my laptop throughout the day. It is always on. Because every time I get a mail, I have to do some presentation, I have to cross check some documents. So it, it is very difficult to be in touch with humans regularly. And sometimes it is irritating and very frustrating. For example, if you make a call to a call center just to change your ATM pin or to you know inform them that you have lost your ATM card. Initially, when you call, what they do? They say, choose zero or choose one for the selection of the language, right? Then you select zero, for example, for Hindi. Then again, they give you nine options. Then in one, you can do this. In two, you can do this. In three, you can do this. And you keep on listening them for seconds, right? Again, when you press seven, there are again some sub options available. And ultimately what you are looking for, when you are tired of it, your call is disconnected, right? The option is not entertained from there. So you make the call again. And ultimately you, uh, you think of that there should be some you know, operator. There should be some officer. There should be some human who can directly talk to you so that you can tell him your problems, your emotions, like your frustration, and you can directly talk to it. So there are uh, auto reply machines, right? Instructions are given to them. They used to say, wait, you are valuable for us. We will be connecting to you very soon. But all that is very irritating sometimes when you are not in mood to waste your time anymore. I, I hope you understand it because everybody of us 
uh, sometimes go with such situations similarly there are autonomous weapons uh, people are working like hell into this area uh, if i talk about uh, the us army us army has already developed the uh, self driven tanks for the war fields they have also prepared certain robots so rather than the actual you know military man there will be robots in the war fields there will be autonomous weapons into the war fields those weapons do have the capability of detecting the targets at their own setting up the targets hitting the targets killing the targets or they can completely ruin a territory right with those dangerous autonomous weapons so although this exercise is done for the sake of protecting their own country so you cannot blame or claim that it is wrong because they are adding up the technology day by day and they are saying that they are going to secure their country and they don't want to lose their men into the war field that is why they are preparing the robots or the autonomous weapons but on the other side if i look into the negative impact it is very threatening for rest of the society the reason is simple if criminals will use the weapons for the negative purposes then it may lead to a new term which is called ai terrorism right a new type of terrorism you can see in the near future when nobody would be doing anything rather every machine shall be operated through some internet connection sitting at home so if you are you know actually very good knowledge you have for your algorithms and you can apply for the negative purpose then that shall be threatening for the society because automated hacking is there and through automatic hacking a lot of uh, poor things can be done people usually make a lot of attacks to the existing networks not to work them as they are being desired for so denial of service attack is there where they don't allow you to think much about your services rather you just keep defending to those denial of services phishing is always there whenever you open today your facebook account you find a request with your friend who is already into your system and there are many requests keep coming alternatively every time now i myself have started ignoring them because i know that is a phished account similarly you can have a phishing account for sbi you can have a phishing account for hdfc so you have to be very cautious very careful when you select them right so this hacking is also not very good for the uh, human society earlier such hackings are being done from their own systems but now this is the automated hacking where it is very difficult to identify the ip also so even if you report into the cyber crime you know it is very very difficult to identify the person who has actually generated that false request for you which may be harmful similarly some negative impacts are biased ai or the filter bubbles the biased ai is when the data set is not completely trained or the inputs given to the system or to a model upon which the machine has been trained if they are biased towards particular effects then the outcome shall also be completely biased for example if if amazon is recruiting uh, some employees or freshers right and the data set is given like into shifts 2 to 8 then night 10 to morning 6 then 6 to you know 2 so perhaps they may be preferring males in the night shifts and if the data has been prepared accordingly then every time that software shall be preferring males over females for a job which is nothing but a bias though amazon was not intended to do so but it may happen when the database or the machine has been learned that way and so data in any case when the whatever application you are preparing for should not be biased at all right so this is how you know your ai has been evolved so far uh, ai has uh, produced a new branch or you can say a new branch has been evolved from the ai which is sounding like a buzz everywhere now that is nothing but machine learning machine learning is a set of smart algorithms uh, which experiences with an aid of the data as rich data as they have they can experience better they can train better and accordingly they can predict the outcome better right they can take a decision accordingly and from the machine learning another uh, very well accepted branch has been explored which is called deep learning right so whenever there is a scope for having the correlated data for working upon the raw data or having the closed complex problem to solve or the data size is too large then we can introduce the neural network into picture and all those falls into the area of deep learning here machine learning has been divided into different parts let me take you to there so before that we should understand why we need machine learning 
what is machine learning what are the different kinds of algorithms available so machine learning is simply uh, a data driven ai as i told you that ai more moreover you know oriented towards the replication of the actions of human beings while in machine learning a set of data is already given a set of algorithms have been type casted with the data now algorithms experiences themselves with at the head of that data and accordingly they predict or take some action right for example uh, identifying the emails into the mailbox identifying the faces recognizing the objects and many more they can diagnose the cancer regions they can diagnose the tumors they can diagnose some other you know uh, chronological diseases uh, they can be widely used for prediction mechanisms they may be stock markets they may be programming robots a sentiment analysis can be done some recommendation systems can be developed even you can look into the uh, online application that which movie is recommended for this weekend right and why do we need machine learning because as i told you there are devices which are continuously generating data today uh, a, one single person is holding you know more than four to six devices in his hand in terms of two mobiles one laptop right there may be one desktop so so there are many devices and every device do occupy some of the sensors those sensors sense the data in the physical environment and those tiny sensors are being connected to the network so that it can send that data to the huge cloud fine so all this process has been automatic the cost of storing is reducing day by day the cost of computation is reducing day by day and that is why people are more involved into data right so we need certain learning there and we need certain uh, machine learning algorithms which can take some decisions upon that this is the basic working pr principle of a machine learning algorithm initially what do you do uh, you choose a hypothesis hypothesis in other words you can call it a model right you just have a model then you collect some data to apply upon that model you try to validate the hypothesis as per your trained algorithm if that hypothesis has been completely validated you predict the result otherwise you adapt those changes you again you know train or update your model you again collect the additional data and try to validate the hypothesis unless it is not completely done that iteration goes on goes on and goes on and you finally predict the precise and accurate values through that machine learning algorithm so whatever algorithm is there that follows by default such kind of basic principle to predict the values but these are some types of machine learning i have already shown uh, there is a supervised learning unsupervised learning or the reinforcement learning right these are the three major well accepted algorithm set which which have been used into variety of application right so so whenever there is a scope to apply a machine learning algorithm we just look into the type of problem we have been offered with and accordingly we choose one of them that whether we can apply the supervised learning we can apply unsupervised learning or that may be treated well through reinforcement learning let, let me take one example i'll come to it so this is one example for supervised learning in supervised learning whenever you have the supervised information with you right for example if an email reaches to your mailbox and uh, if if the first email suppose reaches to you look at the picture email 1 here there is a word free which appears five times the data whether appears one time buy something appears seven times and promotion appears something six times for example right so so your system your algorithm learns that it is some promotional email which is offering something free to buy right or it is a promotional email so because system has been trained in such a way that it will put in a label to that mail as you can see to the right side of this table the first email is a spam email for you so two supervisions have been given to you one spam other is non spam right or not spam so if you look into the second email email 2 you will find that weather has been uh, repetitively uh, appeared there eight times then data is seven times right science is five times there is nothing promotion no buying and no free the stuff has been offered to you so so this may perhaps or possibly be not spam mail for you that may be relevant mail for you because whenever you know open your inbox you usually leave certain mails unopened you never even click on them so machine itself learn upon it that you are not interested guy for such kind of mails and in the later stages put it into the spam mail 
So when a mail reaches to your inbox, if it is not of your interest, it by default reaches to the spam folder and rest of the mails stay in your uh, mailbox, right? So when, whenever a new mail come, what we do? Look here, whenever a new mail come, we look into the kind of, you know, columns, you can say parameters, you can say uh, the extracting, you know, points based upon which we usually predict whether that email is a spam or not. And accordingly, your data has been uh, trained upon those algorithms and they took some decision. I hope it is clear. So that is why we call it supervised learning because supervision has been given to you to identify spam or non-spam mails. Similarly, if you look at the right side figure where there are many faces, uh, your face can also be recognized with the supervision. For example, if you look at you know Facebook application, if one of your friend share a picture at the Facebook and you are also into that picture or, or there is some person who, you know, who resemble your face, then Facebook give you a suggestion that it may be you. So if you want to tag yourself into that picture, you can do that. So, so now, even if that friend has not tagged you, you have been given an option by the Facebook to you itself that you can tag to yourself, but you just look into the picture carefully, you find, yes, it is you, you were there at the event and you can tag them. So it knows it is Vinay, it knows it is Ashutosh, it knows it is some other person, right? And that name is appears there, your face appears there. When you tag yourself, you automatically become the part of that post on the Facebook. Fine. So these are some examples of this supervised learning. Uh, this is unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, what we do, we do not have any levels at all. We do not have any levels. The spelling of level, I think, is mistaken there. Anyways, we do not have any levels like spam or not spam. Uh, and data do not come with any kind of supervision. So, so what happens here? If you look at the pictures, you could see there are certain dogs and there are certain cats. So when we applied unsupervised learning to it, because we are not able to recognize which one is a dog or which one is a cat, but still we have the capability to identify the features of a different kind of object. So when we you know, try to put the similar kind of patterns into one cluster, then we can do it through unsupervised learning. And unsupervised learning will produce an outcome of this picture as that it will collect all four dogs images into one cluster and all three cat images into one other cluster. But it is not capable of identifying that it is a cat or it is a dog because we have never given this algorithm such learning, right? Though, though there may be many applications, there may be similar products into a mart, there may be packet of biscuits from the Britannia, you know, there, there may be some milk pouches, there may be some other fruits, you know, collections. So, so all those belongs to the similar pattern. So your machine can understand them and can categorize them accordingly. There, there is one also example of malware detection. One of my PhD scholar who is associated with me in today's lecture, Preeti, is working on this problem, malware detection. So, so when, whenever an unknown application gets into your system, you have the capability to check it, whether it is a, a, a validated, a genuine request, or it is a kind of malware introduced to your system. So, so you can look into certain you know, features of it. It may be uh, a malware, but you never know which family it belongs to. So what can you do? You just find certain parameters, you uh, predict at your own that it is a malware and you put it into a cluster of malware that it is a malware right so it is an unsupervised learning example if you don't declare the family of that malware <laughs> this is also an example this may be unsupervised or supervised learning both but here what we are trying to do we are just trying to find out one kind of pattern which is a tractor right? so if data is not properly trained if data is not properly given to the machine uh, there may be something like this kid is pointing out some action, you know, over a mountain and it is identifying it as a tractor because the features are matching. That's why. So, so that is the reason you have to give the proper data. You have to give the proper training, right? And as experienced as your algorithm is, it produces the precise and accurate results. So, so that is why you look into the algorithms. When you go through the literature, you find someone's accuracy is 86%, someone's is 96%. Some algorithms are even achieving 99.9%. So it depends on the scope of application, the kind of algorithm you have applied, the kind of data you have in your hand and the sources of that data from where you have been extracted all those data, right? 
if it is real time it is always best the accuracy may be less but the results are always good if the data is already available it is not clean properly it is not fitted to the algorithm properly then the results may be you know not that good for the society similarly we have another kind of learning algorithm which is called reinforcement learning uh, what do we do into reinforcement learning it is neither supervised nor unsupervised so so the no supervision is given and no clustering is done into it rather it is a reward based learning mechanism so when there is no supervision no unsupervision then how do we work into a algorithm like reinforcement uh, let me take a, a few examples of this also the way a children used to behave into its home it learns by hit and trial method always if if you are your infant right you just crawling on the floor you get a toy in your hand then what a children try to do it always try to put every object into its mouth fine suppose it has a toy which is sharp when it try to put it into mouth what do parents do parents all of this sudden start you know shouting no 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 don't do this don't do this don't do this so every time it try something and parents say no to it so gradually the children learns that this is something which is harmful for me and i need not to do this similarly if a kid try to draw something on a sketch you know board it draw it and parents appreciate it okay this is really cool you can do something better than this if you practice it so this is a reward this is an appreciation somebody pat on your back and it says that yes this is something you can you know get into so so you every time try something either you get a reward or you are receiving a failure accordingly you learn fine so whenever such situations to be applied there we can apply some reinforcement learning uh, uh, recently uh, i don't remember the name perfectly but i think it is deep mind such kind of software has been launched by google this is ai agent actually which works on the huge data centers because we know data center produces a lot of heat and energy so this automatic software takes a lot of pictures and videos after each 5 minutes or 10 minutes to cool down the data centers it just observe those pictures and videos and look into that which data center needs the cooling so that they should not burned out they should not be over exposed right they should not be overused anymore so this the, that is work uponing the rewarding mechanism right agents are there they just take some they are, take some trial values apply an action to upon them and then reward the system accordingly so so there may be many many applications where you can apply self driving cars can be used by reinforcement learning or there may be many other applications fine so this is the whole summary which we have been through so far there may be supervised learning which is quite uh, and every time we need a hypothesis as i said every time we need a model and that model uh, predicts what is the object you are trying to access or you are going to predict upon the data right while in reinforcement learning if you see into the third figure this agent there is an agent always you take an action right as per the environment you look into the action so if it is acceptable you reward it and you reaches to a state if that state is close to the goal state then you keep on going to the similar track if that state is not you know near to the goal state then that is not rewarded at all so people are discouraged or the agents are discouraged and they don't put more actions towards that state and that is how we work into reinforcement uh, today and now i'll try to connect my talk with these applications to some society development products right as i uh, told you uh, that we have been very much addicted to this technology today so this picture is representing uh, that a kid who is well aware of its tab do not communicate to the society at all and then this is happening so so this parent is complaining to the teacher he knows how to read and write we want him to learn how to speak right similarly because everybody has internet a cheap internet so so people are always involved with the applications available into the systems there are a lot of gaming for the kids there are a lot of chit chat applications for the you know adults and and there are many learning applications for the teachers like us who can listen a lot of videos or go to the university sites and for the researchers there are a lot of you know papers available to the internet 
and the threatening words have been changed in the scenario totally now if you really want your children to learn about this society you just say that i am going to keep your wifi password change then only they will listen to you otherwise other threatening words don't work at all today in a traditional manner and the height reaches to the people those who are completely doped or completely involved into the technology they can't see anything now fine so a man who is in senses can show the pathway to the people those who are completely involved with the technology well this rises to a new dimension it just shows that how technology can actually uplift or uprise the society rather than giving some bad effects to it so if we imagine a simple morning with the intelligence we could find that how these algorithms are helping us and sometimes even such algorithms can be life savers to us right the, there is one application i am working into one field which is called aiot it is a combination of two buzzwords of today's uh, technical you know scenarios one is ai another is iot so all data is generated through iot that data has been you know observed experienced or trained through some ai machine learning or deep learning algorithms and thereafter we take certain decisions so some decisions are just to felicitate us to give us convenience to give us comfort to give us safety and some experiences are really life saving so if you look into this example the man who is sleeping well with a armband this armband has the quality to show or display a lot of vitals of its body like uh, there may be a display of cholesterol level there may be a display of you know heartbeat there may be a display of very important oxygen level spo2 which we have seen in the recent past that everybody has a oximeter so that oximeter is usually inbuilt into the smart watches or into the sensor based arm bands which are very cheap right and available on online so when we look into it we can see all those uh, values for us but sometimes what happens uh, this uh, particular arm band have the capability to vibrate uh, sometimes aggressively and sometimes very generously but suppose at some time in the early morning 3:30 am it sees a major change in the vitals inside your body and it finds the symptoms of you know that a heart attack may take place after half an hour then what this machine can do for you then this machine aggressively start vibrating parallelly it issues a message to the ambulance it can issue a message to the nearby doctor it can issue a message to your regular medical practitioner or to a hospital right that there is a patient whose id is this he is going to have an heart attack after half an hour or after an hour and meanwhile it aggressively vibrate to get you wake up right when you wake up you are really annoying because it is just 3:30 am you are not happy with your machine but when you see the alert message into your mobile then only you find that it is actually making you aware of some very bad situation to happen so when you get ready before you get ready somebody is knocking at your door and when you open the door you find that ambulance man is there who is asking you to come with him to the hospital and meanwhile your watch or your armband has suggested you to take two aspirins quickly so that the attack of the heart uh, so that uh, severity of that heart attack can be reduced right so isn't it amazing it is not surprising that you are doing nothing you are taking full sleep your your machine is calculating your sleeping cycles when your sleeping cycles are complete it generously vibrate and said now you can wake up because you have taken i mean plenty full of sleep and you are fresh now on the other hand when you are in a severe condition you are in a condition where something wrong may happen to you your machine is capable to identify that and letting you know to take an action prior it it happens fine so this is how the learning algorithms actually performing to every device and they are life savers also if if i extend my morning with some other assets into my home there may be a dog inside the home suppose i usually used to take a walk with my dog i can put in a collar vessel to my dog also and uh, i can calculate the vitals happened to my dog too i can calculate how many sniffs it took last night and if it is well then i can go out with my dog if it is not well i can ask to some you know medical practitioner for my dog as well i can put in the sensors to my flower pots also i can put in the sensors to my sprinkle in the garden also right so i have to do nothing there is a logic in build there is a machine in build there is a learning in build so when they detect the threshold is not crossed yet once they reaches to a threshold they take an action if there is you know a reduction in the level of the moisture in my grass 
then a sprinkle automatically gets on and even this sprinkle can issue a message to your mobile phone as well that it's get on and it will be closed off by this much of time so if you need to do the more watering manually you can uh, you know handle that if not then this sprinkle will automatically gets off and your job shall be done so these are machine who are assisting you like humans fine when you go back to your home you take a good walk and your shower is ready automatically you take the shower you go out for you know uh, your office right so so everywhere there is a technology there may be lights in your home which can save or create a ecosystem for you uh, there may be led bulbs right uh, who who consume less energy the bulbs can be tra trained with the sensors uh, where when you go out the light becomes dim right when you came in the light becomes sharpen fine and when you are not moving into a corner of the house that light shall remain off automatically if you move to the another corner the light shall be open automatically so you have to do nothing rather iot is facilitating you to handle the devices at their own and learning has been given to the devices by certain algorithms and they react as per the learning given to them full full throughout the day they learn about your patterns the patterns you use to switch on your ac your tv right your laptop your lights when you get out when you get in everything has been learned by those devices as i said that these are devices which are generating data so when they learn something they generate the data that data can be given to a you know central computing cloud that can be given to a data center that data center analyzes a lot of things about you and accordingly few suggestive majors can be given to you what which can create you know a lot of savings into your routine doings that can save a lot of time of yours and and there may be optimal uses of all the resources you actually deploy inside your home or into your industry or at some other places where you used to visit so this is one demonstration given it is an application where ai and iot or machine learning or iot or deep learning or iot has been completely emerged and they can produce better solution so fivero is a company who is producing such solutions dr ashutosh i hope you guys can see the video so i will explain the video completely i am leaving my office suppose at some time 5:30 or 6 right so when i reaches to the garage uh, to pick up my car when my car gets on right an automatic message from the car is sent to the home that i am coming back right and my home is capable of calculating uh, the distance from the home uh, i i'll take a pause for a second just hold on sorry i was supposed to take a call so anyways so i was demonstrating a smart home uh, which can take care of uh, so many things for the individual owner uh, when i get into the garage my car sends a message to my home and my home is started getting ready for me right so like this what can i do for you i am coming home may you preparing the house for your return fine you just look at the video carefully there is an intelligent home management system available when the message reaches from the owner to the home home is started getting prepared according to the ambiance which is preferred by the owner right So, so you are doing nothing. These are the intelligent algorithms which already know, intelligent devices which already know, and they are doing the GPS monitoring of your system. They know that if you are traveling with a speed of sixty kilometer per hour, how much time you will take to reach to the home, and within that time, the home shall be completely ready. Otherwise, all resources were off, and there was no consumption at all.
now you look at when the car reaches to your home there is an integration system uh, which is also a learning based system right it will recognize you through certain biometric options or there may be some other authentication mechanism once your door authenticates you completely that is yes it is you and it is the car which is supposed to be parked inside then only that door shall be open there is a web camera again to identify your iris system your face right or to your identity or any rf id which is available on your car right so according to the biometric authentication that camera take a picture of yours and allow you to get in into your own home sorry like this fine the front door has been unlocked your coffee which you actually prefer a black coffee is ready for you you just get into the home and enjoy the ambience of your intelligent home so it is a shared you know amalgam of iot and ai so what are the benefits of having such uh, offerings from uh, the industry the benefits are like efficient resource utilization every single resource of your home have been completely or optimally utilized right human efforts have been completely minimized so when we develop such kind of hardware solutions or such kind of software solutions then a lot of offerings are there for the normal human beings for example siri is there google assistant is there they can do anything for you if you want to make a call to dr ashutosh Uh, what i usually do i just to say to siri call dr ashutosh right so it search for all the options uh, which are saved into my contact list with dr ashutosh if there are three options that will be displayed it will ask which one to call if i say number 3 number 3 shall be called automatically fine so you are doing nothing data is available right learning is there and they always refine themselves with an option you usually talk call to the bimtal or haldwani dr ashutosh every time the first choice shall be dr ashutosh from haldwani fine if you don't call them on a priority the next option should come on the first priority so accordingly they learn themselves adjust themselves and they save a lot of time of yours by applying all such learning algorithms to the excellent intelligent and fast devices now the question comes we talk a lot about the learning algorithms we talk a lot about the intelligent devices we talk a lot about the iot offerings the question comes who cares about all this how many of us if we would have been physically or we would be interacting face to face right in my classroom i must have asked this question to someone all of you that do you actually use some of the product of iot in your house answer would perhaps be uh, no the reason is being a technocrat we are still not using uh, such solutions at our home then who is actually looking forward to it obviously the answer is the big businesses right the businessman who can develop a lot of solutions in the time to come because the next arena is of machines completely and those machines can do wonderful things for us right by applying certain algorithms to them so these big businesses are producing the solutions as you have seen one of the representation by the smart home fivero has prepared that smart home right similarly samsung is preparing you know producing the smoke detectors in bulk so what is the use of that smoke detector till date we are not that aware but in the time to come that may be mandatory from the government side that every home has to install a smoke detector so they have a vision and they know in the time to come there will be an order for such smoke detectors in bulk right so if they are proactively prepared to offer those smoke detectors to the society all shall be sold out over the night this is like in covid pandemic time we have searched very badly for the oxygen cylinders online right and whichever website do have the cylinder that has been sold out at any cost because that was a life saver similarly when some new thing we imagine and we understand the you know uh, the intentions of the human being that what they would be pretending to have in the future to come and these are the big businesses who actually care about it they produce it proactively and once the time come they launch it right and they are being sold over the night similarly google is offering a lot of things that may be an assistant that may be a self driving car right 
that may be many softwares. If you look into uh, in the early days, if you receive a mail, you have to type everything. Now, when you receive a mail, automatically you get some suggestions to reply. Am I right? If you get a common mail, uh, there are suggestions. Thank you. There are suggestions. I'll call you back. There are suggestions. I'll look into your mail later. There are suggestions. I am on a vacation. Right? So all this happens because of what? Because of learning algorithms. They learn the pattern of the mail. They read the words into the mail. They prepare a normal reply from a human being. If none of the reply matches, right? then only you type something. Otherwise, for a quick revert, what you do? You send one of the messages suggested by the Google. So, so at everything they are giving, uh, but when you open uh, google.com and you start typing, when you write A, something is started appearing at what may be the best search with the A. Or when you write some name there, uh, that, that start searching for, right? If you write IIT, that, that may come to IIT Kanpur, that may come to IIT Delhi, that may come to IIT Kharagpur, there may be many options. And today, even if you write nothing, as per the search, it intelligently associates you. Because suppose I was working for NAC like hell from last seven, eight days. So uh, whatever I search on the internet, they associate me with the, some NAC criteria. The reason I have searched thousands of doctors, uh, documents related to NAC. So when I write, write, you know, green audit, the next word appears NAC. When I write energy audit, the next word appears NAC. So they know that I'm going to search for NAC, NAC criteria energy audit. So, so this is what is called intelligence which came through the experience uh, with the data. And accordingly, they suggest something. Fine. So, so they develop the products which society may be looking into future, and then they offer those products at times it is required by the society. And why do we care about this? Businesses, we understand, because they need to earn some profits. They need to facilitate the society. Right? They have to, to produce something which can be rendered or used by the society. And how big that can be, we already know. It, there was a prediction that by the 2020, there will be around 50 billion connected devices upon the internet, and they all shall be producing the data simultaneously. So, so that shows the dependency of the people to the machines. And obviously, today you cannot remain into a vacuum. You cannot be untouched by this you know, internet technology or the connected technology or the learning algorithms. They have been the routine part of your daily lives and you just cannot avoid them, right? Even when I'm delivering the lecture, my smart watch is mentioning me that you are sitting for too long. And what does that mean? It knows that I am sitting ideally in front of a laptop and giving the lecture. Or whatever I am doing, but I, I am not making moves, which is not good for my health because it is more than an hour. I should you know, stand up, I should take a move, I should come back to the seat and I start my lecture again. This is what my smart watch is suggesting to me. So, so devices are, you know, not increasing in a graceful manner now. They are rather increasing exponentially because people purchase capacity has been increased and they are purchasing a lot of devices. This, this has been necessary for them. If you look at the pandemic, all school children have purchased either a tab or a laptop or a desktop or at least a smartphone because they all have to attend the classes on, uh, for example, teachment. So my, my daughter, who's just in class three, she used to sit for four hours in front of a tab and used to listen to the lectures carefully. So she need at least a tab. She need at least an internet connection, right? She need a web camera. And, and accordingly, she need to, you know, connect to her school team. And why should one individual care about it? Obviously, it can bring the smartness in your lifestyle. It can take care of your health, right? It can give you the suggestions you want. Right? It can show you the pathway. So there are many offerings. It can bring the smartness in the people. It can bring the smartness in the environment. It can uh, help you to develop a smart city. Right? It can save a lot of energy into the grids. Uh, for example, uh, we have installed a solar panel into our university three or four years back. So, so what happened? Those solars work 24 by seven. They produces a lot of energy. Right? So when we are in working, that energy is consumed by the institution. But when there is an off, suppose there is an off of one month for summer, then in that one month also, those solars produces a lot of energy. That energy can be wheeled to the grids, right? And when we look into the profit, by the year, we are earning crores of rupees. 
when which are saved just by putting uh, those grids solar grids and if they can be smartly used if if some iot solution can be applied to it some learning can be given to it and they 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 start you know switching off and switching on the devices accordingly then obviously that offering shall be double so system is already there data is already there what is to be done only the learning has to be given an action to be taken according so so v produces that energy for mbvnl also who uses it when it is excessive then we uh, give it to the use of the other society not for the institution only similarly uh, such offerings can be applied to agriculture that can be applied to a smartphone as we have seen that can be applied to better health that can be applied to safety right that can be applied to comfort and convenience uh, let me take an example just just hold on i'll take a break of 30 seconds on okay so we should come back with the business we were discussing the idea that what offerings can be given to the society or the people by this ai and iot field right so so uh, for safety comfort and convenience if i take a simple example uh, suppose you are driving your car you have a navigation system into your car or your vehicle when you drive it it has the options to show you i i developed an application i presented it in croatia europe and in that application what i presented that my navigation system was capable of identifying the potholes in the road while you are driving uh, it can suggest you that there is a speed breaker after this much of time so you should drive your car with the speed of 60 km or 40 km per hour it was also capable of you know letting you know that there is a pothole which is really heavy or there is a curvy turn after a kilometer so every time what i am doing i am giving the safety to the driver or the vehicle owner who is driving the vehicle right i am giving him the comfort by letting him know that if he is searching for a hotel if he is searching for a restaurant if he is searching for a petrol pump right all those information can easily be delivered to the navigation system and because it is already learned proactively the information was given and whenever we uh, move on from a path right we learn that what new things have been introduced there so whenever you switch on uh, your phone onto a new restaurant that is being updated to the google and google added that restaurant value to the navigation system and when you search for a restaurant which was never there two days before if it is available now that will also be shown to your navigation system right so safety is there comfort is there convenience is there even while you are driving a vehicle at a very high speed you know uh, and and unfortunately it should not happen but if you met an accident or somebody met an accident then those uh, protection balloons automatically gets on how does it happen it happens because they just measure the speed some other obstacle is going to hit your chest right and when they measure that speed crosses a threshold that gets on so they completely make you safe right a power brake can be taken a cruise control has been given now to the cars where you need not to change the gear you just put into the cruise control and that will run like anything so all these things are uh, enabled Uh, or all these things have been possible just because of the offerings of so, uh, some technologies like iots so so there is one more application i can uh, consider but i'll only show you one picture i want that uh, some hands on should also be shown to you by one of my research associate priti thakur so i will not take the full case study otherwise uh, i won't be able to end the lecture so this is uh, one case study i prepared for you but i am not going to talk about it uh, too much because it will take another one hour right to demonstrate the full agriculture study anyways uh, the problem in agriculture is uh, today the population rate 
is growing you know doubled the agriculture yield everybody need food to survive the production rate of the food is really poor we need to increase it or we need to increase the yield of that production 50 to 70% at least fine so to produce 50 to 70% yield of the crops uh, cannot be done with the traditional farming at all because here we have put in all our best efforts into our farm houses and we are not able to produce that much of crops which we actually want for feeding the uh, social insects of this country right if i especially talk about the india there is a poor situation of technology agriculture is a leading industry in india but it is never being taken so technically right still some traditional manual operations are happening in the farming we need to bring in some breakthrough or some milestone technology which can actually change the future of the farming in countries like india right so let me show you one video here only for 5 minutes and i will show you some of the problem which have been solved by this i won't go into the details that which of uh, which kind of algorithms have been applied to it i will leave it as an exercise for you i do believe that some handful of contents just to think upon that how learning is being facilitating our lives uh, have been delivered to you so far you just look at this you might have seen the early years of tractors which are used for the farming purpose and if you look at this tractor it is an autonomous automatic man assistance less tractor which can do a lot of things into the farming right this is natural innovation coming up with pipeline that will help get us there industries undergone major development so this was the way out we used to do the farming and today we do the farming like this right? there are robots there are drones earlier we need to have you know thousands of people to do the farming So feeding has been increased, production has been increased, and the manual labor has been completely decreased. We have the automatic picking machines. If human takes only X time to pick up a strawberry, this machine takes you know half of the X time. this is a robotic arm which has the capability to find out the weed into the leaf or the crop and it can automatically you know paste it it can kill it right otherwise it is very difficult for the manual farmers uh, who look into the uh, diseases to the leaves the problems with the leaves half of the leaf you know into a farming house is destroyed or ruined only because of those weeds and they are not capable of uh, finding them individually they just get some you know remedy from the shopkeeper and they uh, just spread it throughout the farming homogeneously and it won't work out at all and it it, it is actually helping you know to the farmers to produce more crops just to look into the crop growth some sensors have been deployed to the leaves and this will let the tendency of these leaves to grow to the mobile phone user and every single data will be generated from here with the add on the sensor and that shall be sent to the machine right if the size of the data is small you can make a server at your mobile phone only you can learn some learning algorithm there you can understand that pattern well and accordingly you can take certain decisions what to do with those leaves right are we doing the right cropping are we actually uh, fertilizing uh, only those crops which can yield better into our farm house right so there are many things to take care of because there may be some farm houses which are not able to produce the kind of crop you are planning for so the data of that you know soil the data of the ph level the data of the protein level of that soil can let you know that which crop can be yielded in a better way than others into your own farm house and that will obviously not only yield the better crop but will give you a business also is a proof of concept all the 
Now, complete autonomous farms have been developed. These are the drones. So, what does these drones do? Just try to understand. These drones fly all over the farmhouse. They have been trained for so, uh, such exercises. And they take the HD images or HD videos of your farmhouse, right? That may be a small farmhouse or that may be a farmhouse uh, spread it into acres. Uh, irrespective of that, they did ju just take some quality pictures. They, they take some videos. Now, now the problem arises. There are certain challenges also. These are the solutions which you can offer. The challenges are like if you take a small video of HD, right, of a farmhouse spread it into a large area. Suppose the size of that uh, video is, uh, for example, 4 GB or 2 GB or 1 GB. So you don't have the technology to pass on that video to the data centers from a suburb area, so from a remote area, from a village which is completely at the outer skirt. And if there are not, uh, you know, good signals of your radio waves, or if if you are not able to uh, reach uh, to any of the provider, there is no VSNL, no Airtel, no Geo, right? Or weak signals are there. Then then you have limited capacity. You have one GB data, you have two GB data, and how can you send four GB of data through the mobile phone to the cloud? That's a major challenge. So that gives the origin to the uh, new kind of research also. Can we have the alternative sources of sending that data? Can we replace those you know, radio signals through the uh, TV spectrum, which is completely unused in the suburb areas? Is that possible to send the data over those TV spectrums? Microsoft is working into this field. Google is working into this field. They are trying to bring out some solutions so that when the agriculture is done in the outer skirt areas, all those data can be sent for the analytics purpose to the clouds, right? There is an IoT gateway, which receives all that data that filter the kind of data which is required for analysis, send it to the crowd, cloud. Uh, and another challenge is coming. If you will be frequently sending the videos and images to the cloud, the cloud centers also has a limitation. You know, if you need a storage since from the earth to the Pluto, it is not possible. If you make the CDs or the plates of such huge storage, Cloud has a maximum limit, right? So, so another solution came into picture that rather than sending your data directly to the cloud, what can you do? You can make a local cloud for you, send the data to the local cloud, analyze your data there, remove the redundancy, find the important prominent features of it, then only send that small data to the actual cloud for the analysis purpose, right? And from there, some action can be taken or assisted to you, and then you can make the better yield of your agriculture. This is my also new research area. Uh, two of my PhD scholars are working into uh, crop monitoring, yield prediction, and the crop recommendation system. And they, they just suggest that which of the field can be used for which kind of crop, right? How much crop can be you know, produced into that agriculture area? And uh, they do it with an aid of IoT sensors only. Yeah, anyways, there are certain other offerings. So what we can do, and let me show you very fast, all that data is analyzed at the centers. We can clone the environment also, right? Look at this example. If there is no natural crop available in the unseasoned manner, then even though you can grow it into some climate cloning, and that climate cloning can be done with the aid of IoT items, right? So you can develop a uh, uh, environment like that. If you are a fish lover, you love to eat fish regularly, then rather than you know going to the 120 kilometers to pick up the fresh fish from the seaside, what you can do, you can develop a clone of a pond of the similar type, what fishes loves, where fishes can be developed, then you can do it at your home. And if there is a crop, there is a plant, uh, which is too far from your reach, you can develop a clone of that you know environment into your house only, and you can develop them in the vertical form. So all these are the inventions or the amendments made to the technology and bringing it into farming and well accepted as well. Fine. So this is, uh, you know, all from my side for today. I won't take uh, you for a longer tour anymore because there are plenty of applications. If you would be discussing them throughout the day, they are not going to end at all. Just to give an sparkle to your thinking, it is enough from my side. I do believe that some fruitful contents must be delivered from my end and uh, if if there is any query uh, with 
these contents that can be asked. Otherwise, I'll hand it over this session to my research associate, Preeti Thakur, uh, to demonstrate at least one or two applications uh, of machine learning, uh, how to write those codes into Python, or how those applications can be analyzed, how those applications can be written. Right? So she can take a half an hour session for you. So thank you. Thank you from my side. Thank you for being the patience for audiences. Uh, thank, if you, you, thank you very much, sir, for wonderful lecture. And really, this lecture is very beneficial for me also. And we all that organizing committee as well as participants. So thank you again. And uh, I welcome uh, Miss Preeti Thakur. Madam, please over to Dr. Preeti Thakur. Preeti, are you there in the session? Uh, let me make her a call. If any uh, participant has any Hello. question, yes, Preeti, you can handle. Uh, you can take over the session from here. Right. Yeah, good morning to everyone. Actually, my mic was mute, so I was not able to uh, say anything. Uh, uh, Preeti, ma'am, uh, uh, one minute. I am interrupting you, uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much. It's a wonderful lecture, sir, and. Uh, uh, I request again all the participants to please uh, be in all lectures. So I think uh, the participants who has not in who are not in this uh, uh, session, so they have missed this lecture. So really wonderful lecture, sir. Uh, I have no word to say you that uh, about the this lecture. About thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for making me a part of the journey. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank so, Preeti, you can take over the lecture from here. I do have an appointment at 10.30, somewhere else. So, sir, I'll take your permission to leave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Best wishes. Thank you, sir. Good morning to everyone. Ashutosh, sir, shall I start? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please, please, ma'am. Sir, allow me to share my screen as well. Okay, ma'am, I am allowing you. Now she can do it, sir. Ma'am, you have you have allowed, okay? Is it visible? Ah, ah. yes, yes. Please, please. So, uh, first of all, thank you to the organizer of this FDP and. Uh, uh, sir has already shared the theoretical con uh, content regarding this. So I would like to give you some kind of uh, applications which are used with the help of this machine learning and which you can also create. I'm also working in some of the uh, areas of like malware detection. So uh, I will not take much of your time and I'll show you the uh, code which is uh, written in Python. So... Uh, Let us quickly understand a few things about machine learning and then I'll uh, jump into that particular code section, right? So as you may be aware of that, we have uh, some types of learning if we are working in machine learning, right? One of them is supervised learning, unsupervised and uh, reinforcement learning. So I am, because of the short time, I'm only focusing on that supervised learning part in which we have labeled data and we are uh, predicting accordingly, right? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, uh, please uh, make it full screen. Full screen, yeah, okay. Thank you. Is it yeah. visible now? Ah, thank you, ma'am. Right, so this is just a chart to, chart to show you that these kind of uh, learning methods are available in the machine learning. And these are the algorithms like K-nearest neighbors, logistic regressions, decision trees, support vector machine, nave-based, random forest, linear regression, etc. right? Some of you uh, may have worked on some of the algorithms as well, right? And after that, we have some of the algorithms related to neural network, that is ANN, CNN, RNN, LSTM, deep belief network, and then restricted Boltzmann machine, autoencoder, etc. For unsupervised learning, we have uh, some uh, well-known algorithms like k-means, hierarchical, and anomaly detection, right? So first of all, let me tell you why machine learning. Because 
these devices, as Sir told, these devices are continuously generating data. So we have to, we, we are really very difficult. It is very, very, really difficult that we will analyze something manually. So that's why we started machine to learn and accordingly it predict. So quickly come on to, uh, I'm leaving these application areas, quickly coming on to the predictive modeling in machine learning. Means if we want to predict something and if we want to analyze and give the prediction. So these are few steps which we uh, take in the predictive modeling. First, you need to have one kind of problem identification. Let me give you an example of problem identification. That is, suppose your problem is to find is the particular file is a malware or not. So my problem identification is I need to check whether this particular file is a benign file or a malware, right? So for that, I will generate some hypothesis. So hypothesis generation, I will try to find out which attribute or the data which I require to solve this problem, right? So that I will cover in hypothesis generation. After that, I need to extract the data accordingly. Like if I want to predict that a particular file is malware, so I try my machine to learn with the past data in which I provide my machine some files which may be malware or a benign and accordingly i start learning my machine so that in the future if i provide any file it will tell that it is a malware file please do not execute right and after that the uh, next step is data exploration in data exploration what we will do we will transform our data because we have collected the data raw right it the machine cannot handle that raw data. There are certain anomalies if we provide that raw data. So we transform it. And after that, we find any model, any model, depending upon our problem, like it may be a classification problem, it may be a regression problem. According to that, we choose any algorithm, right? And after that, we apply that algorithm onto that data, which is, which is processed. And after that, we deploy our model. So this is the step-by-step -step procedure of a predictive modeling, right? So let me quickly show you one application, which is uh, predicting whether the uh, patient has diabetes or not. Okay, so that I have made. This is an application which is taking some data from the user. And according to that, it is predicting whether the patient or whether the person is diabetic or not. Okay, so let me first show you the application, how it is working, and then we will understand how I prepared that. So that application I have made in Python. So I think you can see a form onto your screen. Do you able to see that? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yeah. So this basically this with the help of this form, although it is a complete project, that's why you can see it with the help of interface. Otherwise, I can uh, I can show you the algorithms as well. So uh, in this. Suppose you need to give some kind of input to my machine and the inputs are like pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure, and these parameters are defined by the doctor that if I have the value of these parameters, then I can train my machine onto this. And if in the future, I want to predict that if the certain patient is having these values or parameter values, then if it is having a diabetes or not. So let me give some random values to it. So this is an example of a health sector. That's why these parameters will be decided by the doctor that, okay, if you want to predict a diabetes, then these things are important to know. And on the basis of doctors were doing that. But if I want to automate that task with the help of machine learning, so I will also provide these parameters and let's check with what it will give. 
so once i click on to that it will give me that okay if these values which i have provided my machine is saying the patient has diabetes one means it is giving the positive result that the patient was having a diabetes you can give different values and you can find it out that whether the patient has diabetes or not right so it was just an interface now let us see what algorithm is behind that which is predicting and what with the with ac which accuracy it is predicting so for that let us see now as i told you that this is a problem of classification you may uh, noticed that we need to predict a categorical value that whether the patient is diabetic or not whether that person is diabetic or not so it is a classification problem and it is a supervised learning problem as well because let me show you the data which i took to learn my machine so this is the csv file and here this last column you can see these are the values of these parameter like pregnancy glucose blood pressure skin thickness insulin this data i have already collected and this is the result 1010 you can see the last column last column the value is 1010 which tells if it is one then with these input parameter that person was diagnosed as at diabetic okay and if these values were given then zero means the person was not diabetic so this data i am providing to my machine and accordingly my machine is trained and whatever value if i give then it will tell me whether it is diabetic or not right so this is my csv file or data file you can say now come to the algorithm part so these are uh, i have imported some of the libraries of python these are some functions like train test split which you which you'll see later on that what is the uh, functionality of that particular library or function this is the scandal scalar k nearest neighbor uh, classification algorithm i have used which is depicted by this k neighbors classifier confusion matrix and accuracy score so if the problem is a classification problem so just to uh no that what is the performance of that algorithm for a classification uh, problem performance measure we need to have the accuracy right we create a confusion matrix and accordingly we try to find out which with which accuracy it is giving the result so for a classification problem accuracy score is the performance measure now let us understand what i have done first of all i took the data file that is diabetes.csv read in the python and then i will train my machine so for training the whole data set is divided into two parts here you can see there is a real x it means it is a unlabeled part means these are the independent variables on to which i will predict next is that real y this is my labeled uh, column which is the dependent variable that whether the person is diabetic or not right after that this particular line in which you can see training x testing x training y tra testing y i am splitting the whole data set into two part one is used for training and another one is used for testing now that can be divided accordingly like 70% you can use for training 30% you can use for testing or 20% you can use for testing or 80% you can use so test size you can provide here according to the test size it will split your data set right now first process is done second is now i will transform my data set why i am transforming it because i need to have all my data in a normal distribution right so to deal with some outliers to deal with some uh, outlier value i need to scale it so i used here standard scalar what it is doing this is standard scalar is basically scaling the values of the data set from minus 1 to 1 right so this statement training x sc dot fit transform is scaling the training part and this testing is scaling the testing variable after that i am applying 
the algorithm which is k nearest neighbor and to apply that k nearest neighbor you can see here k neighbors classifier i have used i have to give the neighbor value it means to uh, this n neighbor value is 5 it means it will give its result or it will it will build its result according to the five nearest neighbor okay after that i fit it with the help of this k nearest neighbor classifier so cls dot fit so training x training y now my machine is trained now after that you can see the line pickle dot dump this is nothing but if you want to use this model somewhere else and in the future it will it as well you can store this model because you have already fitted because you have already trained your machine so with the help of this pickle dot dump what you can do you can save your model onto the disk and you can use it in the future now i am predicting so this cls dot predict function here you can see y prediction cls dot predict test x so as i have split it my data into training and testing now this test x is the dependent part of testing values on to which i am predicting my result that if these parameters or this independent values will be given what would be the prediction of my machine so i have stored it in y prediction now i need to check what is the accuracy of my algorithm which i built so for that let us see what is the accuracy so i'll be running this and let the, let let uh, all of you show Fine. So here you can see in the output, this is a confusion matrix. Confusion matrix basically tells us about how many were, uh, how many predictions we have given correct, and how many predictions we have given incorrect. So according to this confusion matrix, my accuracy score of this particular algorithm is seventy nine percent, right? So it is predicting the result seventy nine percent. because uh, you know knn is a very simplest algorithm to implement that is why accuracy is this now in the research what we can do if you want to do some research on to it and you want to improve the accuracy you can test it on other algorithms so that accuracy can be increased so this way you can implement your algorithms and also in the research area if you want to um, uh, increase the accuracy and all you can combine it with different other algorithms and check the results so this was about the classification problem i hope uh, things are clear clear to you if still you find any difficulty in it you can ask me any question you can type into the chat box i'll take your question and i'll try to answer whether this algorithm is clear to you or not okay shall yes, i take one one regression yes, problem as well if time allows then i can take one regression problem itself uh, yes ma'am please please continue and uh, uh, this session will continue up to uh, 11 am Okay. So, uh, so after we have to give uh, half an hour break to con. Uh, but okay. okay. Fine. So this was a classification problem as well as you can take uh, for the regression problem as well. So uh, you have seen, I think, many uh, of the application which, if people are uh, finding some houses to buy or something, then you have seen some application. in which they will give you a kind of uh, suggestions that okay if you want to buy a particular home if it is of size this much and if it is having the specification of two rooms two uh, bathrooms two balconies etc etc so according to this system your price of that home would be this much right so i think you have seen these kind of application um so that type of problem is a regression problem in which your dependent variable is a continuous one right 
so uh, we can also have some kind of uh, um, algorithms for the regression problem and uh, the, for the regression problem we have linear regression one of the algorithm which is used so let me show you one kind of uh, regression application which is related to the house prediction so i'll be uh, sharing that also with you how you can create your own regression problem Okay, fine. Basically, this particular application is for predicting the price of the house, but this is only the algorithm part. It can be created with the help of uh, sub interface, but here, how the regression algorithms are to be implemented is shown with the help of this uh, jupyter notebook so step by step i will show you because time was less so that is why i have created all these things prior to the session if there was a much time then i would have done it in the session as well so let us start with some regression problem so first step is you have to import some libraries as well as I have also imported some libraries like pandas, numpy and all. After that, the first step is reading the data file. So there is a file in which some kind of input parameters are shown and uh, stored and there is a dependent part of it also. I will also share this uh, file with you to see that which kind of input parameters it has. Right, so let us run this. So it has read this particular data. Let us see what my file is having. So you can see here, this is the data which I've collected for predicting the price of the house. So here you can see there are some input parameters like ID of that area in which the house is, how much square feet area it has, some distance from the main road, how many bedrooms are there, how many bathrooms are there, like that, right? So what is the sales condition, what, what is the facing of it, what is the build type? So this is input parameters. And accordingly, my dependent variable is sales price, which is, which is a continuous one, that this is the price if this is specification of the house is this, right? So for uh, doing this regression problem, I am using here in this file, a linear regression algorithm. So first let us see what are the types of different variables. So if you write this df.d types, it will give you what type of variable it is. Right, so you can see here, these part ID area, these are the type object, these square feet is integer. Why I am finding this type? because a few of the algorithms which cannot work on categorical data, so we need to change it. That is why we see what are the types of it, right? Now, df.shape I have used, why I'm using, because I need to check how many rows and columns are available in my data set. So, 7,109 rows were there and 19 columns, it means 19, parameters are there. These are 19 of this, right? Second thing, if you, if you remember, if you remember the step, then after the data collection, we need to transform our data. Like we have to treat the missing value, we have to treat the outlier and so on. So for that, we have also done missing values. So if you want to see how many values are missing in your data, what you have to see, what you have to do, you have to write the df.isnull.sum. And with the help of this, you will get to know that, okay, this n bedroom will have one value which is missed. In this particular column, n bathroom, there are five value 
which are missed and this qs overall is parameters which has 48 value missing so now we are not going to provide because sometimes we can handle with the missing value but if more missing value is there in my data set then my algorithm will not give much uh, good result so for that i need to treat those missing values so that whatever performance my algorithm is giving would be good right after that for treating the missing value what i did you can uh, in the data mining also you have done that if there are missing values then what we can do we can put the values like if it is a uh, uh, numerical value then we can put the mean we can put the mode if it is a categorical value so i have treated those uh, missing values accordingly so i have replaced the bedroom bathroom with the help of these mean and i have filled some values to it okay so these are for the missing value treatment so when you execute this statement it will fill two value wherever it is finding the value missing okay let us run this right so with the help of mean value mode value accordingly you can treat the missing value right so now if you see no missing value would be there after that let us check this is the histogram and with the help of this histogram you can see that sales price basically sales price forms a distribution which is right skewed somewhat right skewed okay because distribution to know the distribution is very important after that i have seen uh, there are some uh, discrepancy in my data set what discrepancy is there let me show you when i run this i have seen that these are the areas of the flats but look at this carefully this cromped chrm pet these are the names which somehow is this chrom pet first line but due to typo error it will shown like this and it is giving some another category but in practical it was it should have this category cromped so i need to check in my data set that okay replace this with this category only because these are by mistake i think written like that but criteria is uh, area is mainly of these five one two three four five six this right so for that i am replacing the value so i am replacing it with the correct one so this wrongly written t nagar will be replaced by this first t nagar and then others accordingly right so i have done this quickly i am running now drop any will drop the missing values if still there are some missing values in any of the column access one is the column if any of the column it is missed it will drop it okay so i have dropped all the missing values which are not required now again the same process of splitting the data in testing and training so for that the sales price was my dependent variable so i have excluded with this statement df dot drop and stored it in the x after that again some pre processing would be done in the last problem we have seen standard scalar right which will transform my data from minus 1 to 1 here also we will apply to transform our data set now this y y will have the dependent column x was having only independent values excluding this dependent variable sales price after that come on to this it is having only sales price column right 
let me run this so just i am checking the shape whether it is equal or not so yes all 7100 rows are there which are matching now applying the algorithm of regression so for that i have imported some model train test split function for splitting my data set into training and testing and then i have applied linear regression so for applying that linear regression sk learn dot linear model import linear regression and uh, as i told you for classification problem accuracy will be the performance measure but if you are implementing a regression problem then this mean squared log error would be the performance measure so here we are not checking with the accuracy we are checking what is the log error right so again in this line i am importing and this linear regression classifiers object i have made and i am fitting with it with, with that linear regression model problem so it is it has created a linear regression fitted my training data so my machine is trained now with the linear regression algorithm now what i will do i will predict now values for the testing set so let us predict for the testing set by this running and let us check what is the score of error so here test score test score here is giving the error to you error means with the help of this mean squared log error which is basically the difference between the predicted and the actual value because actual value were there and your model is predicting something so you find the difference between that so that is called mean squared log error and that test score is 0.09 which tells you that it is a less so lesser is the value of this mean squared log error better is the model okay so better is the model so here this look at this yes, test test and then please uh, con please conclude the session actually uh, uh, we have that time for break 11 to 11:30 sir all right uh, i have done almost everything that is okay now so uh, guys uh, for the summary i will like to tell you that i have shown you one classification problem which was based on machine learning and one regression problem so according to your uh, problem statement you can also apply any of the machine learning algorithm which may be a classification or a regression so thank you everyone that is a first of all i'm uh, really thankful for the organizer for that particular session and inviting me to show this uh, thank you madam thank you very much uh, uh, actually we have sort of time uh, otherwise your lecture is uh, you have explained all the um, uh, things about this uh, machine learning and regression analysis and practically you have implemented Uh, both regression and uh, machine learning and differentiated both so thank you this is wonderful lecture ma'am thank you very much thank you once again ma'am thank you so much sir thank you okay i request all the participants uh, the next session will start at uh, 11:30 so please uh, attend the session at 11:30 okay thank you ma'am thank you once again so shall i leave the meeting now Ah uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am
Hello, it's audible. Yes, sir. Clear, very clear. Hello. 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 It's audible. Sir, I think you have opened two devices. Please put off your other device. Uh, yeah, I, I have switched. Yeah, I, I have switched off the other one. So, welcome. So, welcome uh, in day three. Uh, in day session three. Two. I welcome to all participants. I welcome to all Sir, Dr. Gopal. Of, of, so, Dr. Gopal. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I think you have opened one more device, so please mute or uh, switch off the other device. There is a vibration in sound. Okay. Okay, sir. I think it's okay. Yes. Yeah. So, once again, a warm welcome in day three, session two. No, sir, again by waiting. And, uh, again, it is by waiting. Okay, just a minute. I think it's all of them. So again, uh, some internet issue, connectivity issue occurred. So once again, I welcome to all participants uh, in day three, session two. Our resource person is a eminent personality in the area of uh, artificial neural network. And uh, the, the prominent one and uh, performing a key role in uh, conducting this FDP, uh, Dr. Asutosh Kumar Bhatt, he's working in the School of Computer Science and uh, Information Technology, Uttarakhand Open University, Haldwani. His working area of research is artificial neural networks. 
he has more than 17 years of experience in teaching and research he has published more than 60 research papers in different journals of national and international repute he has published three books and received two national awards dr bhat has also completed five research projects and filed five patents so i welcome you sir for your lecture and i think this lecture is going to be very interesting as uh, earlier lectures were now I, I want to hand over the mic to dr hurt please sir thank you dr gopal thank you very much so today my lecture on the sdp the title of my lecture is artificial neural network and demonstration of its practical implementation so i think my screen is visible So the topic artificial neural network and demonstration of its practical implementation. So I am starting from this uh, beginning of this era of technology and computing and, and the things which are going on day by day, the technology, how to bring the things, how we are innovating the things. And then we will come on the demonstration of the AI and its technique, how to use artificial neural network algorithm or technology to resolve the data and to extract the extract as well as forecast and classify the data. And then I will come on the cognitive computing and this is uh, IBM Watson. This is really a very important and emerging technology of this time. And my fellow colleague, Dr. Sunil, will explain you about the support vector machine and how to tackle, how to deal with support vector machine and how to work on support vector machine. So these uh, ANN and support vector machine are very important. I, and I will cover some portion of deep learning also. So, so you can see in this slide, how we have started we have started by this agriculture revolution and after 8000 year we have started industrial revolution then after 120 year after 120 year we have the uh, that electric bulb has been invented and we have landed on moon after 90 years then worldwide web after 22 years and um, then human genome sequencing and lots of things ai machine learning and lots of technologies are there so from beginning, I'm starting. So how the things are going on, how the things are changing. So, so this is the time of digital revolution. So we have moved from industrial revolution to IT revolution. So year back, we have started IT, information technology revolution. Still, we, we are talking about the information technology today. But uh, years back, um, we have started this uh, uh, IT revolution. And today uh, we are in this digital evolution and we have so many systems, so many devices. We have robots, we have drones, we have 3D printer and lots of things we have. And somehow all are connected with this, all of somehow, somehow all these are related with the machine learning. So how we have started again, see, so manually, we have manual system. Initially we have initial, in initial days, we have these manual system and then we came, we know that the power of this uh, water and steam, and then uh, we have invented electric motor and then assembly line, and we have moved towards this direction from mechanization to electrification and electrification to automation. And uh, moving ahead from this automation, 
we are in this era of technology. So now see this artificial intelligence, how we have started. So during 15, this tic-tac-toe is the artificial intelligence. Only this is the application of artificial intelligence at that time. But now the time so much changed and so much innovated we have. So we have this system, we have uh, Google's Go is playing with uh, world's number one chess player. Uh, and artificial in, intelligence in, nine, in in this this time of during this 16 and 17 and this time of during it 21. So we have this Sophia. Sophia represent this era, this era of technology. So this is uh, this is really amazing for uh, us. And driverless car, driverless car is the example and it application unmanned aerial vehicle. It is also application of this AI. Driverless car is the application of AI. So Google has lots of trials, has taken lots of trial of this uh, driverless car. Professor Binay also told that Ola and Uber are, uh, they are, they are afraid about this driverless system and uh, when it will launch. So uh, uh, we have this type of system and Google's Go, Google's is Google's AI use retinal image to reveal cardiovascular risk factor. So this is, uh, this is the time. Uh, uh, basically, Google is a software company, but now Google is doing on this line. Google is working on this driverless car. Google is not a car maker. Google basically a software company, but Google is working on this driverless car. Google is taking the picture of retina and, retina and uh, finding the cardiovascular risk of uh, the human. So these are the developments. So these are. This is also a some uh, one more example where. Uh, Artificial neural network is watching this flight uh, number uh, and extracting the ECG, EEG, uh, respiration rate, eye tracking also. So they are extracting all the feature and this ANN is finding or classifying or forecasting that um, that the attention of that man is diverted attention or generalized attention or normal state. So we have such type of system. So we, we have such type of intelligent system and um, by this artificial intelligence or this I, uh, this uh, uh, soft computing, we, we can do lots of things. We can do lots of wonders. So um, now again, I'm starting from beginning the conceptual uh, things about this soft computing and hard computing. So uh, previously I have explained you the uh, application of this AI, uh, where we are applying and what are the development of this AI. So now soft computing, now the difference, see the difference between hard computing. Basically we are habitual in this hard computing, not in soft computing. Uh, so initially we have started when we have uh, started learning computing, then we have started in C language, basic language and other um, Java language. So these are the example of hard computing. So we know much uh, the hard computing rather than soft computing, but uh, the difference between these two, the hard computing basically it is analytical model and soft computing, it deals with the uncertainty and fuzzy logic, neural network, uh, and lots of new things, machine learning. So these are the example of this soft computing and hard computing based on binary logic and numerical analysis. And one more major difference between these two, soft computing always deals with uncertainty. Uh, you can see in the last line, ambiguous and noisy data. It deals with the ambiguous and noisy data. And on the other hand, hard computing uh, deals with the exact input data. So this is the basic difference between these two. And uh, using uh, this uh, uh, hard computing, we can develop trade, trading account software, profit and loss account software, like balance sheet, back event point, simulation like software, uh, shopping software, online shopping website, Android apps, online processing system, e-filling tax, e-marketing business, e-ticketing. We can, we can develop such type of product by this hard computing. So 80% we are doing uh, this hard, hard computing and we are developing all the time. We are developing our software engineers are developing such type of software. But uh, this soft computing means this uh, artificial intelligence or artificial neural network. So this, it has 
artificial neural network it has so fuzzy logic heuristic evolutionary computing so all are the part of this soft computing and this is the future and this is present as well as future also and uh, we can classify we can forecast we can model something by using this an and artificial neural network so this is very important so now see this slide this is very important things uh, i have presented here that's uh, artificial intelligence this term is uh, coined by the google and machine intelligence the terms of bloomberg and machine learning as per the microsoft and ibm is saying same thing as a cognitive computing but all the things are almost same some algorithm and some tools are different so but uh, different vendor different companies have developed their they have given it uh, their uh, name accordingly so these are the basic things so many time we we are saying that machine learning we are saying about artificial intelligence we are saying deep learning we are saying cognitive computing but almost uh, they are uh, the, the all the te techniques are all the things are similar things and now machine learning and neural computation so uh, in uh, machine learning we have inductive logic programming associated rule learning bayesian tree learning so we can use this type of these type of the uh, techniques and algorithm in machine learning however in natural computation we use uh, neural network genetic algorithm swarm intelligence so these are the part of this uh, natural computation so these are the uh, basic conceptual difference between these two and now uh, deep learning is very popular uh, these days Uh, the difference between um, this deep learning and machine learning i am showing here so first of all you can see this diagram up to 2014 here uh, in this graph you can see after 2014 uh, uh, the data has increased exponentially so that time our older artificial neural network algorithm are not capable to handle this data and uh, so after 2014 we have started working on this deep learning so deep learning is very popular now so deep learning is the recent technology and recent algorithm and uh, the difference between these two uh, uh, machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence concerned uh, concerned the construction of study of system that can learn from the database and how about deep learning deep learning deep machine learning deep deep structural learning or hierarchical learning is a branch of machine learning it's branch of deep learning is a branch of machine learning and deep learning and why we are using this deep, deep learning because we have huge amount of data and we have to deep mind the uh, required information so uh, you can see this gra graph also so after 2014 we uh, we have exponential amount of data we have huge amount of data and now the problem how to how to solve this data how to extract meaningful information from, from that data so this was the question this was the uh, challenge for the scientists then uh, the scientists had developed this uh, deep learning algorithm they have started using this deep learning algorithm and the uh, important thing of important uh, feature of this deep learning data as we increase the amount of data its performance also increase you can see here the graph this is this this is performance and this is amount of data so as we increase the data performance will automatically increase but in case of other learning algorithm uh, when we uh, are increasing here the data so the uh, the performance of it, it is constant here after this this point it is constant so uh, so it means for uh, this deep learning is capable to deal uh, huge amount of data or large amount of data so in case of big data this deep learning is very important so i request all the participants we have to move towards this uh, deep learning uh, and other algorithm so i i know all the participants are more uh, they are knowing more than uh, me in some of the uh, topics or some of the area so uh, you know very well that this is the difference what is the difference uh, and one more difference so you can see here one more difference this is the difference between machine learning and deep learning so deep learning is more automatic automatic than machine learning in case of machine learning we are manually we are extracting the features so you can see here so the person is extracting the feature after extracting these features then it is classifying and giving the output 
while in case of machine learning this middle layer we have removed this middle layer and we have removed the uh, work of feature extraction directly we are using deep learning uh, algorithm on such type of data where we are not we we don't have to extract the features and directly we are extracting the feature and directly we are uh, classifying and direct or uh, forecasting the output so this is the major difference between deep learning and other uh, learning algorithm or machine learning algorithm so and now again you can see here i, I have given you different perspectives of this uh, deep learning as well as machine learning so during 80s uh, up to during uh, up to 80 we have this concept of this artificial intelligence we have this well known term is artificial intelligence and after in 19 in 1980s we have invented this machine learning we have started working on machine machine learning and after 2010 we have started working on deep learning so after 2010 this deep learning is very popular deep learning breakthrough drive ai boom so it has given the artificial intelligence boom after 2010 so it's very important so so now one more difference between this uh, deep learning and machine learning so you can see here the number of layers are lesser number of layer in machine learning however in deep learning we have number of layers number of hidden layers we have increased because it is deeply it is mining so it is extracting the data extracting the information from the huge amount of data so that's why we have number of hidden layer many hidden layer so this this is number of hidden layer so we have increased the number of hidden layer so this is also the application of this uh, deep neural network also called dnn so this is share, uh, so multi cross language Uh, cross language conversation so we you can see here language 1 language 2 language 3 language 4 so we we have different we have suppose we have more than 50 languages so we can we can convert each language into uh, other language so language on the other side you can see the language 1 language 2 language 3 so uh, directly we can communicate with any person of any language having who is knowing any any type of language so this is possible due to this uh, deep neural network so skype is working on this direction i have this, uh, i think uh, i hope this uh, is working uh, right now so you can see it so speech recognition is very popular right now and it is uh, very handy this time uh, our mobile phone our whatsapp directly uh, as we are speaking it is directly typing into hindi or english language or any other language so this is possible due to this uh, artificial neural network so this these two scientists they have developed this uh, skype translator so more than uh, more than 50 language directly we can convert into uh, in, in other language so enabling this is this is enabling cross language conversation so uh, you can see uh, again this picture in, in this picture we cannot identify that this is cat or this is the dog so uh, so here neural network deep neural network or machine learning by using machine learning or deep neural network we can extract that that the particular uh, image is the image of cat or image of dog but many time uh, if we saw then um, from normal eyes we can differentiate um, suppose this picture uh, uh, we are watching this picture from the distance then we cannot find that this is cat or dog but our deep neural network or machine learning through machine learning we can find so because we have number of layers we have number of la hidden layers so we can find the pattern and we can extract it that it is which type of object is it so these are the some example object recognition is very uh, easy by using this uh, deep neural network or machine learning techniques uh, so these are the application of this uh, artificial neural network or uh, this uh, sorry this uh, deep neural network so uh, now the scientists start working to understand in this direction that understanding image sound music and video so this is very important hybrid neural network we have we are using hybrid neural network we are using hope field neural network so these are so scientists are using uh, scientists are working on this direction understanding image sound music and video initially we know uh, we we can search 
uh, we can search any text in google but uh, google lens by using google lens we can we can search we can uh, after taking any image we can find that the particular image uh, we can classify or we can find the Im image so uh, they are uh, this scientist this the, he has working he is working in this direction so, uh, so i have taken his uh, link of this his paper so google is now working on this streaming on real time voice recognition in different language more than 50 language so these are the deep neural network for acoustic model acoustic model of speech recognition so it, it is very popular uh, we are using this uh, uh, speech recognition in our day to day life so deep learning projects are also darpa is working on deep learning project so darpa defense advanced research project of us uh, project agency or darpa is building a set of technology to help better understand human language so it can analyze speech and text source and alert analysts to potentially useful information so they are working on this direction they are any threat they are they are identifying threat they are identifying threats from the uh, huge amount of data so uh, this is uh, yeah, uh, so this is possible by this uh, artificial neural network so because the terrorist had different different source of sending information so our network our neural network our uh, artificial intelligence should be capable enough to extract that uh, messages from the different source uh, because basically the uh, the, uh, the organizations are uh, searching the information the type of the terrorist message information on uh, that uh, traditional traditional source of uh, medium but uh, sometimes uh, they are using some different medium so this is possible by deep learning by deep learning we can uh, search the meaning of the text and we can extract it so this is darpa is working on this direction so deep learning computers learning and growing on their own so this way like alexa alexa as you as you ask the question by the alexa automatically alexa will train after some time and she will uh, she will uh, she will try to recognize you so uh, the system is able to uh, understand and able to understand complex massive amount of data as well as the first line first line is very important computer learning and growing its own uh, on their own so as professor binay told about that they that they were searching uh, since one last one month about the neck and neck related matter so whenever they are searching the new things so automatically it gives the detail of the neck so this is the ai ai automatically uh, it, it automatically guesses guesses that what we are searching and what we don't want to search so you can you can uh, see this uh, on facebook also which uh, as you search the particular type of video then it will automatically suggest you that type of video also so these are the example and mit is also working uh facebook is finding the meaning uh, this advanced facebook is finding the meaning and uh, of uh, of your post and uh, so this this was the this is the um, ai of uh, this facebook and facebook is also working on this big data analytics is a very important part as i already already told you uh, this is integral part of this machine learning as well as machine intelligence also so now companies are companies are in the race to buy human brains behind the deep learning machine so according to lee microsoft facebook google uh, find themselves in a battle battle for deep learning ta talent so companies are buying these deep learning ta um, uh, talents so you can see on the campus drive or campus placement of the different companies so now they are they are uh, hiring uh, ai talent they are hiring the person of uh, who knows uh, machine learning who knows uh, artificial intelligence who knows this uh, deep neural network or python so python is very popular language this time so so we have so many devices you can see see these all are smart they, they are going they are all the devices are going smart um, smart and more smarter but uh, ultimately they are connected with the they, they are having artificial intelligence or machine intelligence so they, uh, they are uh, the implementation of the machine learning and deep learning so you can see all all those things and i i give watson i will 
i will discuss about this ibm watson so we have uh, we are saying about man and machine supremacy so man uh, and machine supremacy so we are interfacing man with the machine so this is very important and uh, so uh, uh we now we have this type of the system we have a smart factory we have digital factory we have large factory having mm, lots of robot numbers of robots so uh, this is the previous picture uh that time previously we have this pollutant creating manufacturing but now we are we are talking about this smart manufacturing we are talking about the robotic manufacturing and 24 by 7 manufacturing and we have uh, we uh, have these technology and we have predictive analytics we have virtualized process modeling and simulation high performance computing robotics we are we are we are using all these technology all these techniques in our smart factory in our factory so this is manufacturing so this is the uh, picture of manufacturing today's manufacturing we have lots of robot in different form so uh, we we have entered in this robotic era of uh, manufacturing so you can see here the robots are different types of robots so these are the different robots but its developers have packed a whole lot of functionality into its modest frame oslo can do sign language play soccer and even serve drinks number 9 karatas if you ever dreamed of being the pilot of a great big robot this is your chance located within a 13 foot tall frame is enough room for an onboard commander Oh by the way it can be controlled with an iPhone great atlas commissioned by the pentagon and engineered by boston dynamics this disaster rescue dynamo is built to perform the heroic task of saving lives without risking its own we seven termite robots these little guys are designed to do top tedious building work and their way of working was inspired by termites the bots assess their environment take cues from one another and get to work even though they haven't a clue of the bigger plan we six cheetah cup Wanting to know how to make robots take control of tough terrain with the grace of a feline, scientists at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology made a robotic cat. Using it, they can assess joint force and agility without having to harm an actual animal. Number five, Wildcat. Not to be confused with the aforementioned cheetah cub. The Wildcat is the newest generation of Boston Dynamics cheetah robot line. These machines are made for speed, traveling up to 29 miles per hour. While previous versions were indoor sorts, this one is suited to run free. Number four, the Go Virtual Student. Stuck at home with a severe immune disorder, a student in Texas is now able to attend class. So I hope uh, you have seen this uh, very popular video of different robots. So uh, hello. so sorry for interruption so this way so we have this type of different robots and this is well known uh, video and i have uh, i think you have seen this one so today we are talking about the convergence of technology we have different type of technology we have robotics we have natural interfaces 3d printing internet of things cognitive system next gen security so these are different technology and we are combining the technology and creating new technology so this is the time of convergence of technology so convergence is everywhere so we are talking about this embedded system also so embedded technology we are talking about the embedded technology so we have all the technology which we are using so these are embedded as like our mobile phone so in our mobile phone we have ai we have iot we have mobile computing we have facebook we have lots of technology we have security features in our mobile so number of features are there so this is the time this is the time of convergence of technology so this is uh, 
uh, the different technology big data is there cloud is there social media technology is there internet of things is there mobile technology is there so these are the foundation of smarter uh, this smarter planet planet so in agriculture we are using lots of technology as this uh, video also uh, you have seen in the uh, lecture of uh, professor vinay so we have these this type of smart technology and these are these technology are gps enabled somehow they are gps enabled or enabled by the ai and this way we are using lots of technology lots of new systems in agriculture in healthcare in all the field this is a small uh, irrigation system where we have moisture sensor we have solar uh, plates we have sensors different type of sensor automatically irrigate automatically sense the uh field condition field washer so um, these this type of devices and we have to think about this type of the innovation and in healthcare we have lots of sensor sensors in our body like motion sensor is there like ecg sensor here in our body and they are sensing all the time and they are sending uh, our particular information of particular person to internet and internet based ai based software they are finding and they are forecasting our health condition and they are alerting us that we are going to be uh, this attack or not so this is the uh, people connecting to think thing where uh, in this complete system this embedded system we are using somehow we are using artificial intelligence as the theme of this uh, fdp is advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development so that's why i am giving all these snapshots that how we are using how these technology are beneficial for the society so uh, then i will come on the practical implementation so you can see here a smart pill camera is inside our body and this is sen sensing all the internal condition and sending to our tablet and tablet is connected with the uh, cloud based software and the cloud based software is Uh, uh finding and calculating and extracting the required information and uh, then we are uh, and these softwares are connected to the base hospital and finally they are giving us the result of our internal uh, condition so this way we have moved from inter industry 4.0 to industry 4.0 so uh, so this time many time it is this industry 4.0 4.0 many time we are talking about the cyber physical system big data artificial intelligence robotics internet of things so you can see here all these technology are ai based technology all ai based technology are part of this industry 4.0 this is very important industry 4.0 because we are living in this industry 4.0 we have started by mechanization steam engine steam and water power factory system this was in industry 1.0 and in industry 2.0 then we have started mass production assembly line electrification and globalization and industry 3.0 we have started computing so in industry 3.0 we have started already we have started iot it computer emergence of internet autonomous predict production erp system so such type of things are in industry 3.0 but today this industry 4.0 somehow this industry 4.0 everywhere we are using artificial intelligence in robotics we are using artificial intelligence in internet of thing we are using artificial intelligence big data with big data. they they are strongly connected with each other so industry 4.0 somehow we can say industry 4.0 or in, uh, internet of thing or uh, uh, artificial intelligence also so during this time of industry 4.0 we have leading devices we have data storage robots drones sensors cloud computing we have uh, we have this uh, digital communication we have virtual reality web 2.0 processing power energy storage network capacity biotech mobile devices so we have lots many com cognitive computing so lots of things we have this uh, uh, industry 4.0 these are the part of industry 4.0 but we should know how to operate all these technology how we should know how to uh, how to tackle with the internet iot based software uh, simulation software cyber security on cloud computing additive manufacturing on augmented reality we should know we should know big data we should know the language who can use for big data to solve the problem of big data so these all are part of industry 4.0 we should know all these things and somehow all these are connected with this artificial intelligence or machine learning so we know the 
societal development, societal use of these two technology or industry 4.0. So this is very important this time. So if we know, then we are, in, if we, if we know the industry 4.0, if uh, these industry 4.0 are used in this uh, era, then uh, to solve the problem of this industry 4.0, we need worker 4.0. So this is very important. For industry 4.0, we should have worker 4.0, we should have teacher 4.0, we should have uh, professor 4.0 or, or researcher 4.0. Uh, so we have changed to our research. We have to change the style of our research. We have to move from traditional research to research on this direction. So lost, lots of example, lots of example Professor Binay has given. So they are doing on this, this type of example. In ANN, they are finding that particular male is, male is a faulted male or not male is virus or not they are working on this uh, project so they are giving a very 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 important example of this uh, this type of the today's research so industry 4.0 is very important and at the same time worker 4.0 is very important so this fdp when uh, if we if we understand the things we have to learn uh, according to industry 4.0 uh, it means we have fulfilled the aim of this FDP. So this is the aim of FDP. So we have to prepare professors, we have to prepare the lectures, researchers as per the need of this industry 4.0. So this is very important, worker 4.0, industry 4.0. So these are the some more example. And uh, we have lots of machines and these machines are now connected with the sensor and from the home we are, we can operate these machines and previously we have worked on some a, this AI type system. So initially when I have started my career and in 2009, around 2009, this is, this is, this is the model which I have developed uh, during my first research project under DSP under Young Scientist and Fellowship Program. So we have developed one Apple classifier. So you can see here, this is, this is a, a, we have developed this type of system. Kavhar se system banaya humne. So this is basically this uh, system, this is conveyor belt and, uh, and these are the motors and uh, we have this, uh, uh, we have Android uh, Arduino here and we have the system, so this is directly connected with the computer. So in uh, 2009, we have developed this system and we are using ANN also here. So in this system, we are we are sending here. Uh, we are taking here. This is this is infrared sensor. That as infrared as Apple arrive here, then sensor will sense it, and it will transfer to the the motor will transfer it into con conveyor belt, and then conveyor belt when it will reach the in the first motor. Up to that time, uh, the system will calculate, will forecast or classify by ANN that uh, this apple is of category one or category two or category three or four category four. So we have classified it into four categories. So this is the uh, project of apple classifying project automated. Uh, we are using through ANN. So this was the application of ANN. So in 2009, we have started and that time uh, AI and this machine learning is not too popular in India. But we have, uh, we did somehow, we, we did this uh, research work. So this way we are extracting image, size, damage, uh, area, symmetry of apple, weight of apple. So ANN classifier is classifying accordingly. And then we uh, then we have some, one more option of the chemical testing also. So accordingly, we are classifying, sorting classic or classifying apple into different categories. And then we have also worked uh, this IoT base or uh, we have used AI also then after for forecasting purpose. So this is our water quality assessment system. So we have implemented it by AI as well as IoT. And, and this is again, soil quality assessment system. This is a, another project. And uh, in this project, we are finding, we have different sensor by, we are finding the, we are extracting or finding the, the, the quality of soil. And then we are sending it to particular system accordingly. and. Uh, right now we are working on this system and we are using deep learning on this system also. 
so these are some examples so now i am uh, explaining you and demonstrating you how to work on artificial intelligence and then my colleague will explain you how to work on support vector machine so i have basically i have taken the uh, example of this matlab uh, so so uh, when we work on this artificial neural network for forecasting or classification so first of all we have to collect the data and then process the data according to i have underlined here so then prepare it to required form we have to uh, prepare it into required form basically matlab require excel form uh, data in excel form so the raw data we So we will collect and that raw data will be converted into excel form and then we will train the neural network model and finally we will classify or forecast accordingly so this is the raw data so you can see here this is raw data i have taken snapshot of that particular data uh, basically this is for weather forecast dr gopal has worked on it and uh, dr gopal is uh, a very hard working researcher and he has uh, he had worked in this um, uh, Research and we have taken this data from IMD Pune and we have we have purchased this data from IMD Pune. So this was data um, of Uttarakhand. So uh, we are converting this uh, data into Excel form. So you can see here the previously we have this raw data and then we will refine it. This is CSV form. Uh, this data in in CSV form. Uh, and text form. Sorry, in the text form and then PXT file we have converted into. excel form so now we have the data in the different uh, row and different column so and this is data this is all data now we will find the dependent variable and independent variable so this is the first condition of artificial neural network or hbm or deep learning so uh, we have to find the field uh, dependent variable field or independent variable field so in case of in this case we have this weather data so in this weather data rainfall rainfall we are forecasting the rainfall that time so the rainfall is the dependent variable and the independent variables are uh, measure of hpa and measure of degree centigrade measure in uh, dry bulb temperature station level pressure wet bulb temperature dew point temperature relative humidity vapor pressure wind speed so these are the independent variables so uh, uh, if if we compare with the other example like uh, stock market forecasting where uh, the stock price stock index of the bombay exchange uh, is the dependent variable and uh, the feature like uh, purchase rate uh, purchase uh, export import uh, and wholesale price index so these are the independent independent variable so accordingly as per your problem you will divide the uh, fields into dependent as well as independent variables so here we in this case we have this uh, rainfall is the dependent variable now uh, we have to train the algorithm so selected required data in the machine training learning which is stored in the excel, ms excel file so this way uh, we will uh, uh, we will we will have we we have find it this dependent and independent variable then in excel form we will divide them dependent and independent variable and we have four strategy we have four strategy here 60 40 70 30 75 25 80 20 20 so these are four study four strategy so uh, it means 60% the first is as per the first uh, strategy 60% training data and 40% testing data in the second strategy we have 70% training data and 30% testing data and in third one 25 and 25 75 training 25 testing 80 training 820 testing so we have taken four different list we can you can also choose more than four also you can uh, you can use four or five or six so accordingly you can as per your problem so uh, you can define the strategy different strategy now we have to uh, divide the data into um, two uh, two table so after defining the above strategy we have to prepare input data set and output data set so i have underlined here again input data set and output data set so we have to define input data set output data set and also uh, input or training and target variable we have to define some variable also because initially data in the table and you have to uh, copy that data into variable p and uh, p is the initial uh, named p this is for the task p input and training and target variable p p and uh, p new are three different variables 
so i will share this uh, slide you, uh, to you also so uh, i have written everything very clearly so you will understand it so this way we have divided into sample training data set and uh, training data set is there and uh, i have taken here 10 record so these are the these, this is output variable rainfall is the output variable and one two three four five six seven variable several dependent variable are there so this is first data second data third data fourth fifth we have taken here 10 data so i am experimenting with 10 data so you can see again uh, in the previous slide where we have slp dbt station level pressure dry bulb temperature wbt dpt rhbt uh, wind speed so we have taken these short names so first one is the slp then dbt so you can see in this slide also slp is, uh, this is pressure this is temperature so these are the seven different variables and this is the output so this is dependent variable and these are independent variables so rainfall is dependent on these seven variables so this is first record and this is second record so this way we have to convert so initially the initially the data is like that so this is initial data and then we have converted into excel and finally we have converted it in this form so this is the format of data now we will copy this data into p and t so this is p variable so you can see here p926 see in the previous one 926 is the uh, 96 first value then 22 so we have copied this complete line this complete line into p variable in p variable we have come, copied this first line and accordingly this target this is target you can see this is target this is this is input and this is output so we will train by this these this time we are training by 10 data but actually when we will research on that so we we should have more than 500 data so by using these 500 or 1000 data we will train the network uh, and accordingly we, we can take the different strategy suppose we have 1000 data so uh, suppose we are taking 80 20 strategy so suppose it is 80 20 strategy so 80 percent data means eight, by 800 data we will train and by 20 percent data we will test so we have two categories this uh, uh, training category and testing category so this is strategy strategy means the first first is the training uh, percentage and second one is the testing percentage so these are two divisions for training and testing so t contains the target data and training for the training purpose so this state t, t is one three three one seven seven one so again you can see here this is one one three three one seven seven one so this way we this is output and accordingly we have first row second row after each row we will write semicolon you can see here this is first row and first after first row here we have semicolon then second row after second row then again semicolon then again semicolon so this way we have 10 records accordingly we have uh, 10 uh, we have these output also 13 3 1 7 7 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 outputs sorry 6 target value and accordingly we have 6 row also so we are taking 6 row not 10 out of these uh, 10 records we are taking 6 records so this is last 25 and 2 so see here 25 and 2 will be the last one also so this way we have uh, two variable p variable is this uh, data training data and target data is p so this way we have p new is the uh, p new it contains the testing data so we are talk talking about the 40 uh, percent in this uh, in this case we have 60 40 60 40 means 60 percent training data and 40 percent testing data that's why we have taken here six records we have taken one, two, three, four, five, six records, and 40% is testing. So the rest 40% will be taken for the testing purpose. So this is P new. So first of all, we will train and then we will test. If we find that during testing the result are uh, appropriate results are there, then it means our network is forecasting perfectly. So this way 
this is the algorithm you can see here p this is p and map min max we will write here and we will use here train sig train gd and now we have these parameters these are the important parameter train parameter so 500 train parameter lr for learning rate epoch number of epoch goal is this so we are we have to we have to change the value of we will increase the learning rate or decrease the learning rate as well as we can increase the goal as well as we can decrease the goal accordingly we will set the goal accordingly we will set the parameter so these are the important parameter so we have to we have to notice these four lines so then we will train and then we will simulate it so finally finally we will find the output so you can see here partition strategy uh, partition strategy means uh, uh, i have given the partition uh, already given in the previous slide like 80 20 25 25 24 90 10 so different parts me learning rate learning rate is 0.0 0.1 so we can use learning rate 0.1 0.01 or 0.05 so accordingly we can change the learning rate learning rate means like a student in a class suppose the student is slow learner accordingly we will we will change the value so suppose the student is fast learner everything he is catching quickly so it means we have to accordingly we have to teach him so uh, same way we are using here so network is our how the network is learning so we will give we will provide here learning weight and goal also so goal this is goal accuracy means goals mean so we have different algorithm also we have different algorithm these are the train gd train gdm train gdx train gda train rp so these are the different algorithm and we can use accordingly these algorithm 12 training function we have 12 training function and 12 training algorithm and we can change these algorithm and we will find which algorithm is working perfectly which algorithm is giving perfect result then accordingly we will use that algorithm so epoch we will use epochs means how much uh, we are iterating the uh, the model so this is again activation function so these are the parameter these are the very important parameter so uh, so in the above diagram uh, we said the required thing like learning rate performance goal training function number of neuron activation function so paste the above block block of the uh, learning rate etc so we will paste it on the matlab so when we will train when we will execute it then we will find it training neural network it will show the training of neural network accordingly it will show maximum epoch reach up to which uh, what extent we have to train our network it will also inform and minimum size uh, step size reach it will also show the step size also and performance goal met or not it will also show here so you can see the different diagram and finally we had this code block to test the neural network our neural network is working this is the this one the training these are the training snapshot now i am coming on the testing snapshot so by using this we will test it that it is testing perfectly it is giving that perfect output or it is forecasting perfectly or classifying perfectly so this will be by this code so again this is a small code and here we have this p new you can see here p new when we get the performance goal then we have to put another code which used to test the train network and we are showing the code used to testing the network so this is the testing network code by using so again we have the variable we have these variable by using these variable we are testing it so uh, this is the 40% Uh, train and test. I I have told you the testing data set. So first sixty percent is training data set, and this is up to six data. It is training data set, and after six we have testing one nine two seven point five thirty one point two. This is testing data. It will start from here. Uh, so four record are they in this case? We have four record for the testing. So this is testing data set. So we have these four records here. So these are the four records so these are the testing data set uh, and finally we will get uh, the result after a new we will find it we will find the output 
and uh, then on the basis of mean, mean square error, root mean square error, mean absolute percentage error, we will find the difference between actual output and forecasted output. And we will find mean square error. And on the basis of these MSC, RMSC, and MAP, we will find that our network is perfectly forecasting or not, perfectly classifying or not. So difference, if the difference is not minimum, or the difference minimum nahi hai, then we can exchange and uh, we can change the learning rate, we can change the goal, we can change the neuron training function, and we will use another training function, we will use, uh, we will uh, change the goal, then again we will train it, again we will test it, uh, then we will find the result. If result is accurate, perfect, then it's okay, otherwise again we will change it. So many times we will change it, many times it, uh, it will be changed. So this is, so this way we have, we have learning rate, we have different learning rates. Suppose in this case, we have four goals, 0 0.01, 0 0.005, 0 0.001, 0 0.005. So uh, we have different goals. We have different uh, training function, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different training functions. So in, uh, we will use each training function for complete study. We will use each training function. By each training function, we will find that our results are uh, coming accurately or not. Or so we have. We will also use here learning different learning rates. So this is. I think this first one is point point zero one. This is point zero zero one point zero 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 one. And this way we have. Uh, we will fill all the data in all tables. Suppose in any, suppose in, uh, this is the first algorithm, first training function, suppose in this learning rate and uh, in this goal and in this learning, it is not giving any result, so it will be blank. Otherwise, we will fill the value. So, so this way, we have different uh, learning functions. So finally, we will calculate, we will have this, uh, um, actual output and predicted output and we will find the difference between these two and this difference this is the squared squared difference of that this is mean square error actual data predicted this is actual data then finally at the end we will find the difference between predicted data and actual data so the difference between these two is this we will find square m uh, this is msc then we will find mean square error for rmsc we have to square off the error. Then we will find mean square, root mean square error. Then finally we will find the root of mean square error. So root mean square error. Then mean absolute percentage error. So accordingly we will find the mean absolute percentage. So we have this uh, error. So here error is very high. So it means this uh, training model uh, will be rejected. And uh, it means we have to find, we have to use another model. So this is this type of uh, working of this artificial neural network we are doing here, we can do here. So suppose some results are not uh, uh, after this. So the, these are these are the different different uh, output uh, while we are using train GD and when we have one hidden layer, 10 neurons, and this is under this strategy, under 50,000 epochs, and under one, 0.1 learning rate and 0.1 goal, we have this mean square and this root mean square and this mean absolute percentage error. So, and in this, again, in another algorithm, the results are different. In another algorithm, the results are different. So this way we will compare all the algorithm. So this way we have lots of experiment we have to do. So, so this is the method how to work on artificial uh, neural network uh, and how to deal uh, with MATLAB for this uh, ANN based processing. So MATLAB is the um, platform where we will uh, work on this, um, this and we should have data in the tabular form. So previously when uh, ANN was, uh, ANN, before the invention of ANN, uh, generally, the scientists or statisticians uh, working on uh, this uh, regression analysis by regression analysis, they are finding the result. But uh, now this uh, ANN is very popular. So now, finally, in the third uh, uh, phase of my lecture, uh, I am moving towards this cognitive computing. So initially, I have explained you 
the different uh, application, different uses in different area, how uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning or deep learning is used. So I have differentiated you the a machine learning and deep learning also but now this era of cognitive system era cognitive era so this term is coined by ibm watson so during 90s we have started tabulating system so this way we have moved from tabulating system era to programming system era and today we are moving cognitive system era so now you have seen the many of software engineers who are recruited in different companies they are not doing software they are not developing software they are not all the time they are not working on software they are the software development is very easy right now we have huge type of server we have facebook we have big data we have lots of software already available available in cloud so just we are using this software we are combining that the terms combining the things and making the new things so this way we are moved towards cognitive system era so this cognitive system era is coined by the ibm so this is very important ibm watson is part of this cognitive system cognition is the mental action of process acquire knowledge and understanding through thought experience and senses so like a child child uh, gains the knowledge and understand the things and thought after his thought experience and senses he is day by day uh, he improve his working and improve the things so uh, this is cognitive the, uh, like human like human learn like human act so same way cognitive cognitive computing is working so cognitive processes use existing knowledge and generate new knowledge the concept of cognition is closely related to abstract concepts such as mind and intelligence so it is uh, a, a, a associated with the mind and intelligence the technology uh, natural uh, the technology used in uh, this cognitive computing natural language processing machine learning so number of technologies are used so i have already told you the things the machine learning is the term of microsoft cognitive computing is the term of ibm and google is saying it artificial intelligence so cognitive computing ai and cognitive computing represent next big wave of supercomputing so we are moving towards superhuman we are expecting superhuman in human in 2000 2050 so we are moving towards this supercomputing superhuman so this cognitive system era so from tabulating system era to programming system era and then finally to big data to this cognitive era era of computing so this is very very important so uh, how the things are going on so you can see this example and the mode of thought of that domain take the term cancer for instance there are many different types of cancer and each type has different symptoms and treatment however those symptoms can also be associated with diseases other than cancer treatments can have side effects and affect people differently depending on many factors watson evaluates standard of care practices and thousands of pages of literature that capture the best science in the field and from all of that watson identifies the therapies that offer best choices for the doctor to consider in their treatment of the patient with the guidance of human experts watson collects the knowledge required to have literacy in a particular domain what's called particular field particular field it learns the language the jargon so what happened uh, i am talking about the cognitive the computing answer, where there are many in cognitive computing watson is the uh, however the server so or supercomputer of this cognitive computing cognitive system so what is happening watson kya karta hai ki yahan pe watson ibm watson kya karta hai ki hamara bahut sara data jo hamara web pe available hai to ye web pe jo data available hai us data ko generally hum kya karte hain ki data hum jab bhi hum watson pe watson pe main again i am telling about the watson ibm watson ibm watson is the super computer of ibm uh, company so uh, what happened i uh, in i i am giving you one example suppose there is a doctor of expert doctor of uh, cancer in a city so koi ek doctor hai aur wo bahut acha doctor hai uh, aur wo apni throughout life mein Uh, वो अगर 50 या 60 uh, बुक्स ही पढ़ सकता है उससे ज्यादा नहीं पढ़ सकता है 100 बुक्स पढ़ लेगा चलो मान लेते हैं इसको 
और सपोज उसने 200 रिसर्च पेपर पढ़े हैं सो एज पर हिज और हर नॉलेज सो ही और ही इज क्योरिंग द पेशेंट ऑफ कैंसर तो उसकी अपनी नॉलेज के बेसिस पे जितना उसने पढ़ा है और जितना एक्सपेरिमेंट किया हुआ है ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड दैट प्रीवियस नॉलेज वो अपने पेशेंट को क्योर करता है तो अब बात आती है आईबीएम वॉटसन सुपर कंप्यूटर की तो दिस इज आईबीएम वॉटसन सुपर कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव साइंटिस्ट और ये बहुत बड़ा सिस्टम जो हम कह रहे हैं तो ये मिलियंस ट्रिलियंस बुक्स इसके अंदर हम स्टोर कर सकते हैं तो आईवीएम वॉटसन द सेम केस स्टडी गिवन टू आईवीएम वॉटसन एक एक केस स्टडी कैंसर पेशेंट की आईवीएम वॉटसन को दी गई एंड द सेम केस स्टडी गिवन टू टू डॉक्टर स्पेशलिस्ट डॉक्टर तो क्या होता है कि जो आईवीएम वॉटसन है जितनी भी डिजिटाइज नॉलेज है वर्ल्ड में उस कैंसर पेशेंट को ठीक करने के लिए उससे रिलेटेड जितनी नॉलेज वर्ल्ड में है डिजिटाइज फॉर्म में है उस सारी नॉलेज को वो आईबीएम वॉटसन सेकंड्स में पढ़ लेता है उसका डेटाबेस इतना बड़ा है कि उसको सेकंड्स में वो सारी इंफॉर्मेशन को पढ़ ले रहा है एंड जबकि जो ह्यूमन डॉक्टर है उसका नॉलेज बेस इतना ही है कि उसको अगर हंड्रेड बुक्स पढ़ी है तो उसको हंड्रेड या टू बुक्स का नॉलेज बेस है और उतने ही जनरल का नॉलेज है उसको पर आईवीएम वॉटसन जो है वो इतना डेटा रीड कर सकता है और उस रीडिंग और उस डेटाबेस और प्रीवियस जो प्रायर नॉलेज है उसके बेसिस पे वो उसको पेशेंट को क्योर करेगा तो आईवीएम वॉटसन ज्यादा अच्छा सजेस्ट करेगा सो आईवीएम वॉटसन इज असिस्टिंग द डॉक्टर राइट नाउ आईवीएम वॉटसन इज असिस्टिंग टू द डॉक्टर एंड इन इंडिया मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल हैज ऑलरेडी इम्प्लीमेंटेड दिस आईवीएम वॉटसन तो एक वीडियो और है इसमें ये आप देखेगा इसमें भी आईवीएम वॉटसन क्या कर रहा है आपको and helps every learner master the material by responding to what they know, how they feel, and where they need to go. But it does something else. It helps them learn how to learn, all while gathering data to feel insights, insights that help educators inspire learners so they can reach their full potential. After learning the huge amount of data, so it is giving the decision. So uh, this is IBM Watson. again we have lots of example of ibm watson so cap capability to differentiate the cognitive system and traditional programming and watson is a artificial computer capable of answering questions posed by the natural language so in uh, in our system we have 80% of the knowledge in the subjective form and uh, we have two type of knowledge two type of data uh, one is systematic data which is in the form of table and another one is the data which is in the form of subjects like data in the newspaper data in the uh, form of the text to do tarah ke data hai we have two category of data ek to jo systematically table ke form mein hai so our traditional computing system process that type of data only that type of, type of data and that is 20% only keval 20% data hai jo world mein digitized hai aur jo systematic form mein hai but most of the 80% data in the form of jo ki aapke systematic form mein nahi hai jo ya to text ke form mein hai ya blocks ke form mein hai ya journals mein hai ya books mein hai to ab yahan pe ye badi ek interesting cheez hai ki yahan pe jo watson hai watson us data ko process kaise karta hai to ye isme dekhiye slide mein ki how this it reads this type of data very different from the programmable systems that preceded it as different as those systems were from the tabulating machines of a century ago conventional computing solutions based on mathematical principles that emanate from the 1940s are programmed based on rules and logic intended to derive mathematically precise answers often following a rigid decision tree approach but with today's wealth of big data 
and the need for more complex, evidence-based decisions, such a rigid approach often breaks or fails to keep up with available information. Cognitive computing enables people to create a profoundly new kind of value, finding answers and insights locked away in volumes of data. Whether we consider a doctor diagnosing a patient, a wealth manager advising their clients on their retirement portfolio, or even a chef creating a new recipe, they need new approaches to put into context the volume of information they deal with on a daily basis in order to derive value from it. This process serves to enhance human expertise. Watson and its cognitive capabilities mirror some of the key cognitive elements of human expertise. Systems that reason about problems like a human does when we as humans seek to understand something and to make a decision, we go through four key steps. First, we observe visible phenomena and bodies of evidence. Second, we draw on what we know to interpret what we're seeing, to generate hypotheses about what it means. Third, we evaluate which hypotheses are right or wrong. Finally, we decide, choosing the option that seems best and acting accordingly. Just as humans become experts by going through the process of observation, evaluation, and decision-making, cognitive systems like Watson use similar processes to reason about the information they read. Watson can also do this at massive speed and scale. So how does Watson do it? Unlike conventional approaches to computing, which can only handle maybe organized structured data, such as what is stored in the database, Watson can understand unstructured data, which is 80% of data today. All of the information that is produced primarily by humans for other humans to consume. This includes everything from literature, articles, research reports, to blogs, posts, and tweets. While structured data is governed by well-defined fields that contain well-specified information, Watson relies on natural language, which is governed by rules of grammar, context, and culture. It's implicit, ambiguous, complex, and a challenge to process. While all human language is difficult to parse, certain idioms can be particularly challenging. In English, for instance, we can feel blue because it's raining cats and dogs while we're filling in a form someone asked us to So these out. are the uh, methods. So by this example, uh, you can understand that we have 80% unstructured data. We have only 20% structured data and thus traditional software, traditional programs are capable to deal only with the structured data. So we have lots of unstructured data so this Watson is capable to deal with this lots of unstructured data. So, so this is one example also given here. So we have suppose this complete phase. So Watson automatically uh, colored the different type of the category. Suppose date is in red color, name is in another color, person is in yellow color and place in blue color. So we have different colors by uh, it is different, different, differentiated by the different color. So this way it uh, extract the knowledge from the subjective data. So uh, suppose some terrorist is sending data, structured data, then our system will, will catch that data. But suppose any terrorist is sending some secret code uh, under these unstructured data, then it is not possible to find this type of information by our normal system. So Watson is capable there. So, uh, so, uh, so one more example, we have this um, Watson. IBM Watson, uh, uh, there is a case of uh, making pasta recipe. So it is given to Watson. So Watson ko case diya gaya ki aap pasta banane ki recipe batao. So ek, agar hum kisi ek chef ki baat kare, to wo ek chef kisi ek dish ko banane ke kitne tarikhe bata sakta hai life mein. Matab, apni puri life mein, agar usne 30 year, 40 year uh, us profession mein raha hai, so, एक इसमें एक एग्जांपल दिया हुआ है कि आईबीएम पास्ता बनाना है न्यू पास्ता प्रिपेयर करना है उसको वर्सन इसको तो वो कितने तरीके से कर सकता है तो हो सकता है चार तरीके हो पांच तरीके हो 10 तरीके हो 20 तक हो सकते हैं पर सेम केस आईबीएम वर्सन को दिया गया तो आईबीएम वर्सन ने वर्ड में पास्ता बनाने की सारी जो मेथड्स हैं उन सारी मेथड को फाइंड करके जो अपना रिजल्ट दिया उसने दिया कि 204 different methods are uh, available by which we can prepare the pasta. So yeah, uh, this is IBM Watson. So the collection of mental process and activities uh, to precise learning, remembering, thinking, understanding. So these are the, uh, so this one more video is there also. So you will understand. <laughs> Thank you.
So this is this is IBM Watson and uh, so this is the challenge for we all researchers or uh, scientists or professors that we have to deal uh, on that uh, unstructured data. We have lots of scope uh, to work on this unstructured data. So this is uh, IBM Watson and I have given you lots of example of IBM Watson. So Professor Binay also. Uh, given one example of uh, this uh, uh, Ross intelligence and Ross is a lawyer. It can deal with number of cases within a second. And uh, so this, this, these are the development of this technological development in this area of artificial intelligence and this uh, deep learning and this IBM Watson or cognitive uh, system. So um, these are the difference between man and machine and so uh, this one more interesting uh, video, last video. So I, I am giving this video here. This is the video of Puka robot. And uh, this robot uh, is playing with the number, uh, world's number one, that is team ball. So Puka robot and team ball are playing tennis uh, with each other. So this is the very interesting and popular video of this uh, ideal motion. So you can see here how this uh, robot is reacting uh, with this player. Thank you. 
this point onward the game has been changed so see this video till last and finally see the expression of the robot See the final expression. So uh, this is the perfection of the robot. This is the perfection of IBM Watson. This is the perfection of cognitive computing. So um, this IBM Watson is uh, uh, this Manipal Hospital is implementing this IBM Watson. So this is very important. This I I, I have uh, raised uh, um, uh, the attention towards this direction because uh, we should. have to work on this direction also this ai and cognitive computing so we are finally we are moving to this uh, uh, after 2020 we are moving towards this cognitive ai and human level ai and finally we are we will be expecting we are expecting up to 2020 2050 we will have this uh, super human ai so but uh, after all these technology after all these technology we are the human being at least we have to think about this this art this uh, green computing this greenery so we have to uh, think uh, also uh, for this energy conservation also in my all my all, in my all lecture i these are my last slides so we are doing we are developing very sensitive machines very powerful machine very automated machines and machines are working like human being but same time we are inhaling carbon we are consuming urea we are consuming these pollutants so uh, we have to think about that also so um, uh, we have to think our uh, about this uh, we have to worry about this global warming this is the picture of satellite picture of 1979 and 2009 because we technologists and we professors and we all researchers so we have to convey this message to our Uh, younger generation or students also so this e waste e waste is giving a very bad effect over this society and we have this uh, we have this wonderful earth we have wonderful these, these uh, glacier are sinking day by day so we have to save all these things so thank you thank you participant thank you very much and um, good wishes for next generation computing computational intelligence and cognitive computing so my uh, my colleague dr sunil i request dr sunil please continue this session i think the session uh, this is the uh, 1256 so uh, we have uh, half an hour so dr sunil uh, please continue this session so sunil dr sunil is a expert of uh, support vector machine and very a great researcher in this uh, support vector machine uh, he has worked a lot in this area thank you gopal sir dr gopal is very hard working researcher also and thank my colleague thank you sir thank you such a nice presentation i think the the participants uh, will benefit uh, with this uh, intellectual you know session uh, i was listening the session uh, completely the session was very interested sir thank you so much for becoming uh, this interaction with our participants now i request to uh, dr sunil 
uh, I want to uh, say thank you to accept uh, our invitation. Sir, uh, I welcome you, Dr. Sunil. So it's audible. Sunil, sir. It's audible, sir. Sunil, sir. Please. Sunil, sir. I think uh, it's Sunil, not audible. Sir. He has not joined yet. So we should wait till Sunil sir will join. Hello. I think he is uh, connecting soon. I hope so. Asto, sir. Uh, till the time Sunil sir will connect, we should wait. Huh? Sunil sir is connecting within a minute. So connect or a bath hogi sir. So eight minutes may connect. Okay, so uh, I think uh, uh, we should share till now one information to our participants so that uh, uh, you may share your experience regarding the, the lectures, regarding the sessions in your WhatsApp group. And uh, one more request I want to, to uh, uh, with my participants, with our respected participants, uh, kindly uh, make, uh, uh, you know, attentive during the sessions. Uh, in a WhatsApp chat group or either in meeting chat box, we are uh, receiving number of requests regarding the attendance link. It is my request to all dignitaries. Uh, you know, you are the reputed professors in different colleges, different universities. Uh, it's not, you know, classroom. It's not, you know, teaching learning session. It's a kind of intellectual session. You all are, you know, number of times you all people are, you know, uh, 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 acted as resource person. So uh, everybody should understand the dignity of such programs. Kindly, uh, I'm getting the individual messages too. Sir, uh, please send me, you know, uh, attendance and feedback link in WhatsApp group in somewhere else. So I think we all are in a different manner, in a different role. Every should, uh, everyone should understand this, you know, this, this reality. So please make convenient to yourself with, with others also. Also, Shaiyad, Dr. Sunil Kumar has joined kiya hai. Right. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sunil, sir, welcome in this session. I welcome thank you, thank you, you on behalf of Uttarakhand Open University. So kindly uh, you can unmute and uh, and can share your screen. Support vector machine. Okay, thank you. Uh, myself, Dr. Sunil, I'll be starting with the Please, one. Uh, Start your uh, webcam, if possible. Okay, 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 sir, okay, okay. Just one second. Is it visible? Yes, sir, please. 
okay so uh, you have learned uh, so many uh, so much about your learning machine learning and all that so i'll be taking one aspect and i don't have so much uh, colored picture so much colored or dynamic or animation over there i just simply have a so one application i will be telling you uh, for the forecasting using support vector machine so i hope uh, you must having some idea about after vector machine but i'll be taking little bit about of it so this is a uh, one of the machine learning algorithm which is packed with the uh, axes sword blades bows daggers and it is uh, very much used for regression as well as classification this is one of the supervised learning machine algorithm supervised means uh, it will take data plus program and it will generate model and uh, this is being used in uh, handwriting character recognition text categorization we say and uh, i have taken one problem of uh, regression which is which i have converted into a uh, classification problem i'll be showing you one that one so this is one of the uh, basic diagram of your mach supervised machine learning it takes label data and uh, uh, do uh, data preparation is there extraction is there then model training then we have to uh, generate we have to create one or different models for the machine which we call trained model then we apply that trained model on the test data which is unknown to the earlier and then we'll see whether this uh, trained model work efficiently or not whether it is able to classify or not say uh, we have a hexagon and square and triangle we want to discriminate we want to classify so uh, this is a uh, again a uh, classification technique and uh, it works by separating two classes you can see over there i'll be marking over there i'll just see pointer will take it now you will see we are separating these two classes using this hyperplane and this is a n dimensional space which is segregating these two and these there are two parallel lines are there the two parallel hyperplanes are there just to discriminate the classes from the hyperplane and we call it uh, this is optimal hyperplane we call it decision boundary this is decision boundary and here these data we call it support vector support vector kyun bolte hain why why we call it support vector these are the training examples or examples training on which we develop models machine or model of so that we can prediction we can do uh, prediction work or some futuristic work we call it and these are support vector which are the which lie on the exactly on the two parallel hyperplanes now and the distance between this these two hyperplanes is called maximum margin and maximum more the larger the maximum margin it will classify in the best way narrow the margin it will misqualify so support vector are nothing but just subset of training data so here we have a two classes one above the hyperplane other is the other is below the hyperplane this is one set this is one class
now so we say the class above the hyperplane we treat it as as one class one and less than the value or the other class which is opponent of that one is called zero class you can say the value zero so the largest maximum margin because we we want to separate these two classes we call it maximal margin hyperplane and this svm always guarantees that best function best model by the maximizing the margin and maximum margin distance is used to classify the data or you can say best generalized model and we have a soft margin why we why we are doing why we are putting hyperplane we are putting hyperplane for linearly separating the data in the coming slide you will get to know that there there are chances the data is non separable non linearly separable for that some other trick is been used we call it kernel trick we will be discussing in that one also so normally data is massy and it is not linearly separable by hyperplane so we give some constraints of maximizing the margin we want to maximize the margin to have a best model so what we do we just give soft margin classifier and or you can say uh, and this soft margin classifier is given in terms of some slack variable so that it may be possible that some of the data set lie in between the optimal and the or decision boundary and the parallel hyperplane ho sakta hai ki yahan par it may be possible it may be possible some of the data or some of feature some of support vector may lie in this area so for because they are misqualified in that way in that case we are giving some cost margin penalty parameter we can say say 3 so that it may give you at least best model in that way, that case so we are giving c parameter so larger the value of c means more violation of the hyperplane are permitted and if we give lesser value of c less sensitive to the algorithm means lower variance and high bias yes and here c is a basically parameter for soft margin function basically we want to control the effect of individual support vector they may lie they may lie in between the decision boundary boundary we call it hyperplane and the parallel hyperplane with the which is shown with the dotted line dashed line now so we have a svm is been implemented using kernel kernel is basically it's a mathematical function for transform data now as i told you this is not possible to separate or linearly separable data so for that we have to for example uh, we'll be discussing those cases also for that we will be using say we will be going for high dimensional data say we are uh, transforming 2d to 3d for that we have to use some kernel kernel is uh, basically a similarity function and which is provided to machine learning algorithm and it transform data from 2d to some using some mathematical algebra and there, there is a one linear 
SVM, which is an inner dot product. Now, uh, there are different kernel are there. We have a, we call it linear kernel SVM, polynomial kernel, radial kernel, and polynomial kernel uh, is a similarity of vector for training of data. We are using uh, for uh, polynomial for non-linearly separable data. And this polynomial and radial kernel are used for curved data. Now we'll be discussing uh, some uh, cases over there. I will just, I will tell you. Now, uh, data preparation for SVM, we use uh, SVM takes input as a numeric. Since uh, we are you having labeled data, we have to convert it into the uh, some numeric value. And binary classification, it works on two class basically. Here we have uh, either one or zero. Now look at this diagram over here. This, if this is visible. If this is visible, if this is visible, Gopal, Gopal sir, If this is visible, ये सुनाई दे रहा आपको? दिख भी रहा है कुछ? Hello, participants. सुनील सर प्लीज कंटिन्यू योर स्क्रीन विजिबल हाँ सर मेरी आवाज आ रही है ना बिल्कुल आ रही परफेक्ट है आप कंटिन्यू हाँ हाँ मैं सर इसीलिए मैं रुक गया मैं आवाज की वजह से नाउ दिस देर देर आर सर्टेन सेट ऑफ डेटा एंड दिस इज़ अ डिसीजन बाउंड्री एंड देर आर टू Parallel hyperplanes are there, and these points are called support vectors, which lies on the decision boundary. Uh, sorry, below the decision boundary and on the hyperplane towards their side. So this is your support vector. And one class we say plus one, other we call minus one. So now, how does it work? For example, hyperplane discriminate or differentiate these two sets of data. This, it segregates two sets of two class of data. Now, let's have a, a few scenario. One, there is a scenario where uh, we have a A, B, A, B, C, If you look at this, this class, this star class is performing good job and it is separating, means they are linearly separable. And here, look at this, in the red one, they are misqualified over there. And scenario T, their classes, they are separating their classes also they are linearly separable and see the decision boundary here. And distance between these two classes, 
this is your margin, maximum margin here. This is maximum margin here. Distance between these two parallel planes. Now, here, if we take higher, selecting hyper, uh, hyper plane with a higher margin, Definitely, it will there will be chances of misqualification. Means some of the data points, some of the support vector, some of the data points or feature come under the this or on the this decision point, or you can say the hyperplane and the parallel hyperplane. Now. This is a, again case over there. There's a one misqualified over here. Now, here B has a misqualified since this star, one of the data point come over in the, inside the boundary and, but A is classified properly. Now, Let's take one more scenario. We, we call it non-linear, where data is not uh, separable, linearly separable. Look at this. Some of the point, if data is too hard, look at this. Some of the blue points, red points are mixed together. For this, we have to transform to 2D to 3D, or we have to map, we have to transform into higher di dimensional space so that we can separate, we can segregate the data. Now, there's a one more case. Here, two classes, two classes data is mixed with each other. So we will be doing this by kernel trick. What we have to do, we have to lift up the feature to higher dimension. We have to transform to the new feature. Look at this. We will be, a new feature will be having some mathematical formula, x square plus y square. And here, just to uh, take to 2D to 3D. And this will separate out data. We will do doing third dimension, that is three dimensional. In that case, it will be uh, a linearly separable data. Now, so this is called kernel trick for separating the non really separate separable data. So how does it work? So I'll take a little bit more of it. Now, how to learn SVM? How do we train SVM? Basically, we have to uh, use uh, SVM use uh, optimization procedure. Basically, it use SMO, sequential optimization method over there. Now, sequential minimal optimization. What it does, it breaks up the problem into smaller pieces. It trains the problem into smaller pieces and gives you the optimal result. Now, uh, we will be taking up one case study for the rice yield forecasting. I have taken data from 1950 to 2040 from all India level. And this is uh, taken from the Directorate of Agriculture. Now, how do we create feature space? Feature space means the training data or testing data. First of all, we have to do normalization. Normalize this data, I'll be showing you data. How do I have taken the data here? Here. 
इज दिस इज विजिबल आज तो सर ये दिखाई दे रहा है आपको ये एक्सेल शीट जी सर नहीं एक्सेल शीट नहीं दिख रही है नहीं दिख रही है ओके ओके एक मिनट मैं इसको प्रेजेंट करता हूँ पहले इसको स्टडी लिखा हुआ दिख रहा केस स्टडी हां मैं एक मिनट अभी ले रहा हूं नाउ इज इट इज विजिबल ये दिखाई दे रही है जी सर जी विजिबल है ओके सो वी हैव टेकन डेटा फ्रॉम 1951 52 2014 हियर सो लुक एट द ईल्ड ओवर हियर जी सर मिनट सर प्लीज सुनील सर अह we have to uh, we have to complete it at 130 and we will continue from uh, 230 onwards okay so, so i'll be continuing the same topic or i have to finish ah, it you 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 conclude uh, sorry so you uh, you have to carry on this uh, session up to 130 right okay and after 130 we'll give one hour one hour break and Uh, again we will continue from 230 um uh, i'll be continuing or uh, at 230 or not yes 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 you will be continuing okay okay okay, okay. okay. sir okay okay uh, no problem uh, after 5 minute okay okay so okay okay sir i will i will be finishing it up now uh, i'll be uh, uh, stopping it here after 130 okay ha uh, you don't have to conclude it okay uh, i will be not will concluding it's not possible from 230 onward also uh, okay. uh yes sir it's not possible to complete in within 5 minutes now yes sir so yes, sir. i have done i have taken uh, this yield you can see the yield over here you can see yield now this yield is in uh, kg per hectare now production is metric ton over here now what how do we have done it normalization how we have prepared data data preparation kaise hui hai we'll see it now i have taken uh, Two year relative increase as an input. Now I'll show I'll show you this minus this divided by e three means this I have calculated the relative increase for two year, and this will be treated as an input for the training of SVM model, right? now then for the output we have given and output is manifested like a uh, theory of moving averages uh, i have done uh, taken the average of four year five year so i have taken average of four year first four year then start from this one to next four year in the same way i have calculated this pattern over here now then thereafter this is this is a four year average in the same fashion we have calculated five year average for the five year we have tested for uh, uh, Four year, five year, etc. Then we will be doing relative increase for the output. Now, how we have done it? We have done in the same way. We have calculated in the same fashion. Uh, this minus this divided by seven six two. Say. This is in a E seven E E seven minus E six divided by seven six two. This uh, into hundred, we got this much of value. Now, what basically what we are doing? We are just doing normalization here. Then normalization. Why do we do it? Why do we normalize data so that the larger value do not overwhelm the lower values? Basically, our job is to find the hidden dependency in the data i have taken this rice yield forecasting just on the basis of yield since i don't have i was not having the meteorological data and we have taken we have experimented on the basis of yield only now so now in the same way we have calculated the average for 5 year so this 
is a no strategy is known as strategy of moving averages now we are given some class class just because this is the class i have converted this regression problem into regression problem so what we have done we have done we have scaled using some ranking so you will see uh, these these relative increase now i will be, be showing you the scaling how do we have done scaling over here now so we have taken two year relative increase as a input and uh, moving uh, the relative increase the output we have taken from the relative average increase so we have a we have feature space we have a similarity of actors in svm we call it feature in ann we call it training pattern so we have period of 64 years from 1950 to 14 we have taken from four year increase we have taken from four year relative increase so we are able to generate 50, 60 feature space for four year and 59 feature for five year now how do how we have done scaling over here uh, scaling is different for four year and five year this doesn't matter but we have to give classification say this range to this range 1 minus 2.5 to minus 0.5 what you have done you have taken minimum value and the maximum value and then given some brackets sir sir yes sir should we continue this lecture okay sir um, okay 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 sir we will continue the uh, from here only in the next class okay sir thank you thank, thank you, you yes डॉक्टर सुनील
यस सर तो वेलकम ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिस इज थर्ड सेशन ऑफ थर्ड डे ऑफ द एफ डी पी ऑन एडवांसेज ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग सोसाइटल डेवलपमेंट तो एक्सपर्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन डॉक्टर सुनील कुमार डॉक्टर Sunil Kumar has completed a higher studies from Birla Institute of Technology, Mysore, Ranchi. He was awarded degree of PhD on the thesis titled "Development and Analysis of Soft Computing Technique for Forecasting Agricultural Production" from Gurukul Kangri Vidyalaya, Hyderabad. His research interest includes machine learning and computer networks. So, thank you very much, sir, and we welcome you in the third session of this third day. So, over to Dr. Sunil, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, please you can continue. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, Doctor Astosh, I will be uh, repeating from the uh, first slide, right, sir? Ah, uh, sir, I request you to uh, repeat the same slide. Uh, from the beginning because some of the participants are connecting right now so you start from the beginning okay uh, so today uh, we will be discussing about uh, a software vector machine uh, with the one practical implications you have learned uh, so much about machine learning supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning but uh, we will be sticking to the uh, one supervised uh, learning algorithm that is support vector machine this is a discriminative classifier uh, machine learning algorithm and uh, this uh, is a like a sharp knife which even work on small data set and it can develop it can create a stronger and powerful model and this is uh, useful for uh, classification as well as regression problems in the last we will be discussing about uh, various uh, few of uh, svm applications and and it lead to higher performance in uh, handwriting character or digit recognition this is text categorization category over there so this is a one of the efficient family of algorithm in machine learning so in supervised learning uh, we have a, a data plus uh, program data plus output and then we used to get the uh, model over there and we have label data means we have uh, some uh, kind of uh, identification which is tagged to the data then uh, say uh, we have a uh, uh, data like uh, hexagon square triangle then there is a model development machine model is over there then on the basis of model a uh, model sorry model developed over there we used to test whether that model is working or 
working efficiently or not means we measure the performance by accuracy M means whether it is able to classify the data set or test data which we have given after the development of model that is machine model and this learn from we have seen in the last videos last uh, fdp sessions that uh, it learns from experience learn by example basically we have to train the network we have to develop a machine model we have to uh, find the hidden dependency in between the data so before i uh, start with the introduction uh, let's have a, a little bit uh, from the video then uh, we'll i'll be discussing one by one uh,
which best segregates the two classes. So how does it work? To understand SVMs a bit better, let's first take a look at why they're called support vector machines. So say we've got some sample data over here of features that classify whether an observed picture is a dog or cat. So we can, for example, look at their snout length or their yeah, ear geometry. Uh, 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 if we assume that dogs generally have longer <laughs> snouts <laughs> and cats have much more pointier ear shapes. So how would we decide where to draw our decision boundary? Okay, sorry. Well, we can draw it over here. There was an audio problem. I'll be starting from the very beginning. Or to another fun and easy machine learning block where I saw a lot of people with their pets, dogs as well as cats. And then I came across this strange creature. It was really challenging for me to tell whether it was a dog or cat. But I eventually figured it out that it was a cat groomed like a dog. Now, if it was challenging for me to figure it out, Imagine how difficult and challenging it would be for a computer to precisely classify between a dog and a cat. A really great algorithm for these types of applications is the Support Vector Machine Algorithm or SVM. It looks at the extremes of the datasets and draws a decision boundary also known as a hyperplane near the extreme points in the dataset. So essentially, the Support Vector Machine Algorithm is a frontier which best segregates the two classes. So how does it work? To understand SVMs a bit better, let's first take a look at why they're called support vector machines. So say we've got some sample data over here of features that classify whether an observed picture is a dog or cat. So we can, for example, look at their snout length or their ear geometry. If we assume that dogs generally have longer snouts and cats have much more pointier ear shapes. So how would we decide where to draw our decision boundary? Well, we can draw it over here, or here, or like this. Any of these would be fine. But what would be the best? If we do not have the optimal decision boundary, we could incorrectly classify a dog with a cat. So if we draw an arbitrary separation line, and we use intuition to draw it somewhere between this data point for the dog class, and this point for the cat class. These points are also known as support vectors, which are defined as data points that the margin pushes up against or points that are close to the opposing class. So the algorithm basically implies that only support vectors are important, whereas training examples are ignorable. An example of this is so that if we have in our case of a dog that looks like a cat or a cat that is groomed like a dog, we want our classifier to look at the extremes and set our margins based on these support vectors. So we have d plus, which is the shortest distance to the closest positive point, and d minus, which is the shortest distance to the closest negative point. And then we have the margin of a separating hyperplane, which is d positive plus d negative. The line or decision boundary that segregates the two classes is commonly referred to as a hyperplane because SVMs can be used in multi-dimensional datasets and the data points are referred to as vectors as they have coordinates within this space of data. So what we discussed so far is also known as Linear Support Vector Machines or LSVM because the classes are linearly separable. But what happens if we have a dataset that is not linear separable? So say we are presented with data that looks like this, where it looks almost impossible to use a single line to separate the two classes. We can use a function to transform our data into higher dimensional space. So you can see over here we go from one dimensional to two dimensional space. We can apply a simple polynomial function to get a parabola. And now you can easily see how we can draw our hyperplane. We can do the same for this dataset where it's easy to draw the hyperplane or line but for a machine, we'd use a function to transform our data from two-dimensional to three-dimensional feature space. Now, the only problem with transformation into higher-dimensional feature space is that it's computationally expensive. We can use a kernel trick to reduce the computational costs. A function that takes as its inputs vectors in the original space and returns the dot product of the vectors in the feature space is called a kernel function, also referred to as kernel trick. Using a kernel function, we can apply the dot product between two vectors so that every point is mapped into a higher dimensional space via some transformation. So essentially, we use it to transform a non-linear space into a linear space. If we look at some popular kernel types, 
Here are some popular kernel types that you can use to transform our data into high dimensional feature space. They are polynomial kernel, radial basis function, RBF or RBF kernel, sigmoid kernel amongst others. Unfortunately, choosing the correct kernel is a non-trivial task and may depend on specific task at hand. No matter which kernel you choose, you need to tune the kernel parameters to get good performance from your classifier. A popular parameter tuning technique includes k-fold cross-validation. We'll deal with some of these parameters in our Python labs. So the advantages of support vector machines are that they are effective in high dimensional spaces. They are still effective in cases where number of dimensions is greater than the number of samples. They use a subset of training points in the decision function or support vectors, so it's also memory efficient. Support vectors are versatile. So the Now, coming back to the slideshow. So we have seen uh, how this SVM classify two sets of classes or segregate uh, these two kind of classes. And uh, we have seen the one case of uh, linearly separable and other is non-linearly separable. Uh, we will discuss that one also now. So uh, we have seen, uh, we can divide, we can separate, we can segregate. Uh, there's two sets of classes using decision boundary. This is your decision boundary. V is a, it's a optimal hyperplane. Optimal means the, the, the margin, the margin uh, uh, between these two uh, classes should be maximum. This is margin. And there are two parallel hyperplane, which is being shown in dash line. Uh, they are near to the, their own, classes set. Now, why there is a maximum uh, margin? In case of maximum margin, there will be a, a best machine model. So now one thing more here, the data point or training point or the training examples, which are on the parallel hyperline like this, they are called support vector. On this basis, on this basis, machine model is being developed. And they are, these are nothing, they are training example. They are example training or on which are the subset of the feature or train data. If these are the just these are the subset of this class. Now, here uh, we have two classes. One is with the blue circle and the uh, other is filled with the, you can see filled with the blue and they are the training example or the support factor. And these are the other class, which is called a square in shape. Now, we have just discussed uh, data support vector. They are the closer point to the hyperplane and which influence the model development, right? Means basically the purpose is to quali uh, to get the minimum misqualification so that the model should be of the best performance. Now, so classifier, which is separating, classifier is a separating hyperplane. These uh, support vector or training example define the parallel hyperplane and thus 
distance between these two planes or the parallel plane which are shown in dashed line it is called maximum margin now this is a hypothetical classifier now uh, as i told you svm classify uh, split the input variable space into two category one is class 0 other is class 1 now class 1 is uh, opponent side is say if it is 1 the other side will be a 0 means uh, points above the of this hyperplane or decision boundary is called class 0 or class 1 or below it is class 0. Now, as I told you, the, the margin between these two classes, which we call maximum margin, maximal margin hyperplane, that should be maximum so that we can develop the best model. As I told you, there are less chances of misqualification. Misqualification means uh, SVM model will not able to classify them. So higher margin means better control on generalization error. Basically purpose is to develop the best generalized model using SVM. Now, uh, there is one term over there, we call it soft margin classifier, since data are real data is messy, it's a noisy. Uh, so we, you can say that is not linearly separable. So for maximizing the margin of the maximum, uh, maximizing the margin of the line between two classes, we give some kind of slack variable so that we can have a best machine model. And this uh, value, that margin, we call it soft margin. And that soft margin, uh, we call it uh, here, uh, the tuning parameter is in introduced, which we call C. C is a C. C is a tuning parameter here, uh, which basically defines the amount of violation of the margin. If we say if we say C is equal to, there means no violation. Means no data points of any class is in the or between the descent boundary. Iska what, do, what I want to say, ki there is no, agar zero hai, means there is no data point in this boundary here. Means there is a, no chances of misqualification. Misclassification, sorry. Now, so if we give larger value of C, means more violation hyperplane are permitted. If we say uh, three, then it means three chances, three data points can be allowed. So basically C, C is a tuning parameter, we call it soft margin, which influences the so number of support vector, which influences the number of support vector. As I told you, if I give C equal to three, means there are three data points which can be allowed or which can violate the hyperplane. Means they can come in between the these two boundaries, these two hyperplane, parallel hyperplane. So you can say uh, this is C, you can call, can, you can call it C is a penalty parameter. Now, so uh, we implement how this uh, SVM is implemented. Now, uh, we will be taking some cases over there uh, where data is linearly separable. There is no issue, but where where data is not being linearly separable, here we have to transform one 
into higher dimension, low dimension to higher dimension. So that means we have to put some polynomial and it will return you some kernel as a dot product of two train data. So kernel kya hai? Kernel is a basically a, a training function or you can simulate a function and which is uh, given to the machine learning algorithm. What it does, it takes two input and spit out, out how similar they are. That's why it is called simulate function. It classify kar hai basically. So, uh, uh, SVM, linear SVM kya kar hai? Abhi linear SVM ki baat kar hai? Linear SVM mein kya kar hai? It is transforming the problem into some linear, using some linear algebra. It is transforming from low dimension to higher dimension, one. So, linear, mene abhi bola ki, if we transform lower dimension to higher dimension, in case of non-linear uh, separable, data, it will return as a dot product of two train data, two observation. So we will focus on polynomial. As I told you, this is a similarity of vector in training setup. While training feature, feature kise bola hai? Uh, training, we call it in ANN. And feature we called in, training pattern we call it in artificial neural network case. But in SVM, support vector machine, we called those observation data point as a feature. So uh, polynomial kernel, while transforming from lower to higher, it gives you some polynomial function as a uh, dot product of two or of two given observation. Now, uh, let's take a, a data preparation for SVM, then we'll come to some scenario, uh, how this separate linearly, uh, linearly separable case and the non separable case. Now, first is numerical input. As I told you, SVM, when I, whenever SVM works, they, it takes some numeric data. Say, if we give some classes, say, uh, tall, shorter, we have to give some value to it. When we do some, uh, this kind of ranking, we have to give some numeric value. We have to categorize. We have to give some numeric value to this, to each category. Binary means two class. Now, uh, this is diagram we have already been, have seen it here. Uh, this is a decision boundary, and this is a parallel hyperplane towards the this category, and this is the category towards this class. Now, how does it work? As I told you, it works in n-dimensional space uh, where there are n number of features. n number feature means there are n number of observation. There are n number of training points or data. How do it segregate. So first of all, uh, it segregate. Uh, we have a, a one categories of star one uh, and which is marked with a blue. And there is one category which is called uh, circle, which is marked with the red. And uh, there are two uh, cases. There we have a uh, three hyperplanes A, B, C, and B is exactly classifying of doing its job good or job its job accurately now scenario two we have a three plane again segregating a b c we have to identify which one is the best uh, hyperplane or right hyperplane so here if we see uh, here we if we maximize the different uh, the if we maximize the distance it will achieve good or best SVM model. So here C is C is high. C hyperplane is high as compared to A and B. Look at the 
this and this one now if we roughly if we increase the margin to the larger value definitely this will give you the best model but if we have a with a low margin definitely there are chances of misqualification means a misclassification means some of the data point may fall ho sakta hai ki there are my points if we decrease this margin there may be chances some of the point data points may fall in this region which is been not classified which will not be classified with svm model which svm will not able to classify now now here uh, there is a chances uh, there is one star from the one class will be definitely it will trap to catch now basically a purpose is to maximize the margin now the other case is uh, where uh, we have a uh, data is been mixed with the red and blue their data two data set is mixed with each other now we have to uh, separate this is a not uh, linearly separable we have to uh, uh, separate into two different classes that is a, a blue one on one side and red one on one side and this can be done using uh, mapping transforming from lower to higher dimensional space which is the basic which is the one of the important function of svm and in this will be a, a requiring some polynomial function now now look at the another case where data is being mixed uh, on two dimensional data is mixed with, with each other now we have to uh, lift up that features into higher dimension 2d to 3d say for example so we means we need some extra dimension over a z category here we have x and y uh, coordinates are there so for this this is a dot product It will be a squared number of both x and y and this is the case we call it kernel trick is required so that we can transform high lower to higher dimension 2d to three dimensional case so this is the case of three dimensional which is used to separate the non relatively separable data now how this how to learn how to train a svm model uh, one this is this svm model uh, needs to be solved using optimization procedure basically this svm works on sequential minimum optimization method means what it does it breaks up the problem into smaller pieces and then it solve analytically by calculating means it partition the training problem it divide the features into small pieces small problem right and it uses quadratic programming qp that's why it is called smo and this is used for training support vector machine now let's take a uh, one case study uh, for svm also sir my voice is audible ashutosh sir my voice is audible sir my voice is audible sir my voice is audible 
please tell me my voice is audible Gopal sir, my voice is audible. Anybody of you can tell me my voice is audible? Okay, thank you. So let's take a one uh, case study. That is for rice yield forecasting. And uh, I have taken uh, rice yield data from uh, 1950 to 2014 for the India. And I've taken this data from government website that is Directorate of Agriculture. Now, uh, first of all, how to prepare data, how to uh, create feature space. As I told you, in SVM, we used to take up uh, input data and training data, we call it, and this is a feature space. Now, uh, first of all, uh, we have, uh, uh, have normalized the data and we have, I have only one input, that is yield. On the basis of yield, I do not, I was not having metrological data uh, since it's a costly affair and it was not available on the secondary data. That's why I have taken a problem as a yield data, and then uh, we have a trained. So before training, what we have done, we have done uh, normalization. How do we have done normalization? How do we have done nor uh, we have done uh, normalization for the data? Why we do normalize the data? Uh, because uh, Larger value do not overwhelm the smaller value. That's why we have uh, done normalization for the data. Now, for normalization, we have used a strategy of moving averages. Moving of averages, I will discuss how we have taken this data. I'll be telling you. I'm sharing you the Excel sheet. Now, this is data from uh, 1952, 2014, and we have a yield over here. And so here, what, is, what was the strategy for taking input of how to create feature space? We have taken a two year relative increase as a input. For example, uh, we have a, um, 1950, we have 668, 1951, 714. So how do we find relative increase? So uh, we have uh, subtracted yield of 2000, 1950 from 1951, then divided by 1950 into 100. So we got this much of value. You can see the formula, right? So in the same pattern, we have done relative, we have calculated relative increase for all the years. For example, in this case, we have taken 764 minus 714 divided by 714 into 100. So this is a taken as an input now. And two and the, and the output. We have to give output since it's a labeled, uh, it's a supervised learning. How this, we have calculated the, we have manifested 
relative uh, four year average increase as a output or five year average increase. Now see how we have done it. We have taken first four year average, this, then next four year average, then next four year average. So we keep on calculating like this and we got this much of values over here. Now, after this, after calculating the averages for the four year and five year continuously, now we come to the relative increase, moving average. The, this is a strategy of moving averages. Now, how we have calculated uh, the relative increase in the four year case, this is a basically called strategy of moving averages. Now we have done 800 minus 762 divided by 762 into 100. For the next 840 minus 800 divided by 800, we got five. So in the same fashion, we have calculated for five year. In four year, we have taken four year average and relative increase for the relative five year increase, we have taken average of five year. Now, after this, we have taken category. We have categorized this relative average increase, four year increase of five year due to uh, some in some category, some ranking, say class one, class two. As I told you, I have taken, I have converted this ranking uh, regression problem into the into the classification problem. Now, I'll be coming to this screen here. Just I'll be showing you the category, how we have done it. Now, Say a relative average increase is minus 4.52, minus 2.5, the category is one. We label it as a low, value, low, very low yield. And minus 2.5, 0 0.5, to low yield. So as I told you in a before lunch session also, ki we can have different category or category class, say very low field, we, uh, ranges may be different, ranges may be different. Why ranges, why ranges are different? Because they, we have to classify according to the five year or four year relative average increase separately. So we have ranked one, two, three, four, five, six. Six means very high yield. Now. Look at this data again. We have given category for class four, category for four year, five year. We have to see this value. We have to see this value falls in which category. So in this way, we assign the class category to every four year relative increase and to every five year relative increase. Now, this is uh, been done as far as the output is concerned. So we have scaled using uh, relative averages. Now, now how to prepare data for training for uh, how to prepare feature for training SVM model. Now, this is our input. As I told you, two year, two year relative increase will be taken as your input. Now, how do we make pattern over here? How do we make feature space? Now look at this 1.667, we will take four year, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we will leave first one, then take next four. You will see over here. Then 
leave first we will leave two in the next training pattern then next four then we will leave first three then next four in the same way we will be, we'll be getting this kind of training or feature space and along with it this is a your four in increase values are here this is the class identifier class category in the same fashion we will be doing for the five year means we will take first five in the first row then we will leave first one then next four five then we will leave first two then take next five and in this way we will be getting training pattern and the output as you know in a supervised learning we have to give we have to give input data plus your output then we will have a model now look at this now this is screenshot of computation which i have just shown you in the excel sheet this is what the computation of sheet how do we have calculated the uh, input and using a relative increase then uh, uh, relative increase then uh, moving averages etc now these are the training pattern or feature space which i have just shown you how this pattern are being generated by taking first for four year we have taken first four year relative increase then we we'll leave first one then take next one we have taken we have categorized we have done pruning we have put very low yield at one side two at uh, after this three we have arranged in, in that order now now how we have uh, how to develop the svm model now we want whole data whole feature space to be used for training or developing developing the svm model so that overall efficiency should be increased for this i have used k fold cross validation k k fold cross validation is a technique for using overall feature or overall data for training or developing the svm model so in our case i have used three fold cross validation and four fold cross validation and five fold cross validation means we will be making three fold then four fold of the same data then five fold and we will see the accuracy performance accuracy three fold means for in first case first fold will be set for training rest two will be testing in the next fold first and last will be used for uh, testing and the middle one will be off for the training in the third fold there will be a first two will be for testing and the last will be for training in this case overall accuracy will be increased same as the four course fold validation definitely it will take more time for developing the svm model but it will give you overall good performance or good performance accuracy so here we have used uh, original data or scaled or normalized using strategy of moving averages and we have calculated the prediction accuracy by averaging accuracy of training of each fold now this is the program code for three year we have used uh, four fold five fold now the feature space which we have uh, i have shown you in the last screenshot that will be stored in mat5 and we have taken three fold since it's a three 
fold validation, cross validation. Then we will be having accuracy one to three means it will fill zero since we are using the for your confusion matrix uh, is there accuracy. Then C mat it will generate your for confusion matrix since we have six classes. Six, six, three, uh, threefold. Uh, why? Why there is three? Because it's a uh, because we have a three classes. That's why. Uh, sorry, three cross validation, three fold over there. That's why. So I just told you, uh, SVM used to convert the labeled class into some numeric. So it will take very low yield, but it will assign some number. It will take some very high value, high high yield it will give you some value. So it generates some, it takes some label data and then gives you some numeric value. Then uh, cross validation, we, since we have to use overall data, that's why you have used to K fold cross validation. Then we will be uh, running, since we have to use overall data for training and testing, we will be using holdout method. We will be keeping, one uh, in threefold, we will be keeping one fold for training, other two for testing. Then in the same fashion, that's why we have to use loop. And there is a one-to-one -one pair, one-to-one -one SVM method is there. One-to-one -one means uh, we have to predict uh, uh, one class from the another, right? So, uh, in this way, we will be creating number of combination, then as a model will be developed, then testing is done. Now here, I'll let you know one thing, more thing over here. Now here, they have used box constraints. This is your penalty, this box constraint I will be showing you. This is a box constant, which you can see it. This is a penalty, which is the very last line of your code, box constant. This is your penalty parameter, tuning parameter. And kernel function is polynomial and three is the value given for the, means there are, it takes, means there are three data points which may fall between the two hyperplanes. Now, uh, after training, we got different uh, results. We have threefold, 73%, fourfold, 75, fivefold, 64. And for five year case, we have a threefold, 64, fourfold, 56, fivefold, 53. So here we get the best accuracy for the fourfold cross validation, that is 75%. 0.06%. Now, there are certain applications are there of SPM. Uh, there are many more are being in the, being used commercially, but uh, we will be discussing a few. So this being used for cancer detection, uh, you, uh, sir has, or in one of the video or one of the uh, slideshow, I was looking at it. He, uh, you have a breast cancer, you have a lung cancer, you have a, a other type of cancer. So this cancer diagnosis, uh, there are machine learning method which can be used to detect cancer detection. And Google using image classification to find the cancer. Now, next is stenographic detection in digital images. So here, uh, you can use, uh, SVM can be uh, used for whether image is pure or adulterated, whether it is a, uh, some tampering has been done or not. So uh, this can be used uh, in security-based organization to uncover secret messages, uh, encryption messages in uh, high-resolution images, in high resolution images, there will be more pixels. Messages is very hard to detect. And we can segregate pixel and store data in various data set. 
and this we can use analyze using SV. A speech recognition. Uh, this can be uh, SVM can be used for uh, segregating the individual words from the continuous speeches. Here, what we is been done. Uh, here, uh, words are isolated words are extracted, and their model is being trained, and we can use it for deaf people, dumb people. Uh, sorry, deaf people, and. Definitely, uh, we here will be acoustics data. We will be uh, pronouncing it in a audible, and we will be uh, producing some sound over there for these words. Next is texture classification. Uh, initial, as I told you, we can take pictures, and we can use that picture, and we can train model. We can use images for surfaces. We can see the surface is smooth or gritty. We can find, and this can be used uh, good enough for uh, preserving your cultural heritages, like temples, like monuments. We can preserve. Now, the next is text classification, uh, image processing uh, thing is there. Now, this is a classification say human handwriting and computer alphabets. Here, uh, we can classify email into spam or non-spam. Uh, we can categorize a news article into politics, stock exchange, whether particular uh, news item or articles is pertain to politics, stock exchange, sports, right? And we can also differentiate handwriting of two different people using SVM. So what it does here, we take the images of various alphabets and sentences from handwriting. We take uh, different images from uh, handwriting, uh, from this handwriting images, alphabets and sentences. And SVM classifier can be trained with the sample data and we can differentiate with the human writing as well as the computer alphabets. Now, uh, these, uh, this time it's very much uh, used in facial expression classification, gesture classification. Uh, we have used happy, you can see the different moods, happy, different gestures, sad, angry. So we can classify life care system. We have so we are, uh, whether we are normal happy, we are having a sad look classification, we, we are looking sad, we can classify, we can filter it out and uh, we can classify uh, or we can classify uh, the ranges from happy to sad. Means little bit sad or little bit happy, more happy, etc. So we can have a different uh, category over there, and we can classify depending on the. Uh, we can give a ranking to the, also them, to them also. So this is what about my presentation. Uh, I hope you may have like this. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, what a eye-opening lecture. And uh, uh, I think that the participants uh, will benefit it from the the uh, you know intellectual lecture. And uh, we have uh, some time for the question answer session. Uh, if any participants want to ask any question, uh, he or she may ask. In the chat box, uh, you may write. Participants can write in chat box. Or uh, we will uh, give you a chance uh, to ask question if possible. So very, very thank you. Uh, the lecture was very nice. And uh, you introduced about uh, SBM, its applications in various sectors. How can you we use this, this support vector machine for different purposes? Such a nice lecture, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, so uh, nice of you. Yeah. So, uh, is there any question? Maybe in chat box, there are uh, some questions. No, no question. 
uh, they are asking for you know uh, attendance link and uh, ppts we will give you ppt very soon participant so so uh, let's we are about to finish this uh, day 3 session 3 uh, lecture and uh, uh, i hope so uh, our participants are enjoying with it and sir uh, once more sunil sir thank you thank very, you very much, much for making you, this session you. so wonderful amazing you, session thank you sir thank you and uh, thank you. i request you to kindly share the ppts or yes i definitely I, i will do i'll do yeah. i'll do it so so that i can share among the yes i will do it friends yeah thank i will you, do sir. it thank you once more so nice so, so nice uh, dear participants uh, your participation is you know uh, is of key concern and we all you know the team organizing trying to give you the best among the the team between this uh, this machine learning and you know artificial intelligence team we are trying to give you the best so we will share the uh, you know learning material for ppt pdf whatever we will have regarding this so uh, uh, we are about to finish today's uh, lecture day 3 session 3 or uh, the next uh, session uh, tomorrow will start sharp at 9 o'clock so thank you very much for your uh, you know warm presence uh, dear participants we will meet you tomorrow uh, in day day 4 session 1 at 9 o'clock thank you very much i have again sent the attendance link kind kindly find uh, in your chat box attendance link is available you may uh, fill the uh, attendance and feedback form after just 2 3 minutes i will end this meeting kindly click on the chat box and find the attendance link it is over there